Right, that's my mic. <laughs> now let's find you guys' mic. Um, oh man, desktop audio. That's the one, isn't it? Uh, say something. Hello. Yes, yes, yes. yes. It's Lord, Ac Lord Acquisition here. Yes, okay. We're now live. We are live. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> oh, let's turn up the guys a little bit. Okay, everybody. Hello and welcome to this week's, this month's Xbox 2 Plus One show with your hosts, Jez Corden and Randall419, the man with the million Lamborghinis. Hello, Rand. How are you doing? Hello. Buddy? Hello, hosting. Jez, uh, yes. are we. Can, yes. What are we going to do with your hosting abilities, Jez? Uh, I, well, what are we going to do about this? I think we, we just might have to show it down after this and, and just uh, just accept the fate that the fact that you're going to be the host forever because I just have constantly. I don't, I don't get a break or a reprieve. I look forward to these because I don't have to stream it. Nope. You know, I can just nope. chill nope. like Cognito, you know, like <sighs> I look forward to these because I don't have to do anything, you know? No, well, mm -hmm. it's, all, it's, all, it's all a big mess. But anyway, I'll, I'll overlay the Discord the voice overlay is not working so no one can see who's talking which is wonderful i don't know why it doesn't work it just decided it doesn't want to work for me anymore but it works for me on my yeah, side on my obs well I, I put you i put your url in and it still doesn't work so what what can you do eh? but anyway i digress because we need to introduce you, our special guest are you though. using the which which way are you using discord are you using like it as a in the browser or are you using the app and using the app Okay. I, I just don't work. But anyway, who cares about that? Forget all that. doesn't matter. Because we are here with Xbox Community Royalty Round. Indeed. Big time royalty. <laughs> Big oh, time that. royalty. We have none other than Lord Cognito in the house. Insert sound Yo. effects here. <laughs> <laughs> Studio audience applause. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing, man? How's it going? I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good, man. It, it is, first of all... I'm honored to be here. Two of my favorite gentlemen in the community. Um, always have fun either podcasting with you guys individually. And I'll be honest, you guys have, over the years, have just let, literally elevated yourselves to my number one podcast that I cannot miss. It. I cannot miss every week. Like, I, I try to, even if, I, if I'm if i late, Rand will talk to me like, you didn't listen to Xbox 2 this week. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. You know, I'll get to it. But I, I try to make sure I listen to you guys. You guys are my favorite you know, very balanced opinions, and um, yeah, man, it's, it's stuff to talk about. I've been, I've been enjoying myself, enjoying the time off, much needed. It's been a very eventful and stressful year, fun, oh, yeah. but at the same time stressful. I needed this break, man. I needed to de-stress. I needed to um, kind of put the podcast mic down for a bit, so it was no Defining Duke, no IOP, no Last Word, no Meta. <laughs> so that was also good, and um, yeah, man, I, I, I did tell Rando, if you guys decided to do this, you guys would be the only show I'd break my silence for during the holidays. Oh wow! Yeah. So we have we have the exclusive Lord Cognito holiday opinions moving into twenty twenty three. Well, thank you very much, uh, Cog, for joining us. You know, um, you're welcome. You, you, they, are... they, you know, he he they didn't even do ILP last week. They're not doing ILP this week. Great. Damn. So we got some exclusive cog, you know, like some exclusive cog. You know, de defining yeah. Duke. They're on yeah. vacation. Like he mm -hmm. hasn't talked about. Oh look, hey, it's working. The avatars are working now. Uh, oh, there I go. I look at my little logo. Oh, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> oh wow. Uh, the, the realm has been blessed. Yes. yes. Let's go. <laughs> so you know, before we get started. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, just let it, let people know what you're all about. Where I know, because everybody knows you, anyways. But you know, for anybody listening that doesn't know Lord Cognito or yes. ILP, give us give us like a brief history of sure of you know why you started mm -hmm. ILP, what you're doing with Defining Duke. You know, all those, all those little things for the, for the yeah. listeners out there. Of course, of course, of course. So for those who don't know, obviously, I'm Lord Cognito, Iron Lord Podcast. Every Sunday is the Lord's Day. So kind of four lifelong friends who, through gaming, you know, we either knew each other in, in real life from the South Bronx back in the day. And then thanks to my good friend, my brother, Addict, Lord Addict, you know, he's the one that got an old man to, to pick up a microphone and, and talk gaming. Because these were the conversations we would have at Xbox Live parties all the time. It would be me and King and Solve. And, you know, it was just one of those things that I never thought 
podcasting. I didn't understand it. I didn't because I'm I'm old, <laughs> so I didn't understand <laughs> like why why people would care to listen to anyone mm-hmm. talk about gay. It didn't make sense to me. And I'll be honest. You know, I'm more of a guy that you know I have friends over, or we or when obviously we got me um and King and Solve got older and we couldn't hang out at my house. You know, it was one of the things that Xbox Live. That's why I think I really fell in love with Xbox because um. The, the idea of Xbox Live was just something so cool to me. Like, yo, it's like we could be at, at Cog's house on a Saturday and we don't miss a beat with playing games. And that expanded. And then obviously with, with podcasting, um, yeah, it just took off. And initially we started off as a, as a Destiny only podcast. <laughs> And we love Destiny so much. Me and Attic would play. And then um, people were like, hey, we like you guys, but uh, we don't want to hear about Destiny all the time. <laughs> so we <laughs> we started to talk about other games. And um, actually, uh, fun fact, Tim Dog was our first ever guest. Ooh. And Tim Dog, we, it, we, we, we were called the Iron Lords Gaming or something. Like, we wanted to, like, it was like an intervention. Why don't you play Destiny? <laughs> <laughs> something stupid and we did that for a while and then uh that that didn't go well and then we, we start talk about just everything that's going on in the industry people like that and then as it grew king and Sov eventually were guests on iron lord podcast because it was just us, us we had a different group and those two fell off and it was just me and me and attic but then we had Sov on as a guest and i'm like man the chemistry is just like how it was we had king on as a guest and then he just took us to the next level so yeah it was, it's been that and um as far as podcasting i've been doing lp for a while we turned into llc and then you know we go to the shows and stuff like that and lords of gaming.net you know our website our sister site and um then from there um mr matty plays approached me and he talked to me about uh defining duke and it was something that was really interesting to me, kind of to just talk about ex- Xbox exclusively. You know, he's he's a superstar to me. You know, the kid is super talented, big heart. And, uh, yeah, we just hit it off immediately. I think I was a guest on their show with ACG when they were – the initial construction of The Fighting Duke was uh, ACG and him. And I was the, a guest, and we just really hit it off. And then, obviously, a- ACG did leave. And then Maddie was looking for a host, and he just – I'll be honest with you, Rand. I was – I think me you talked about it. I think – you, I think you told me, you were like, Cog, it's going to be you. And I'm like, it's yeah, not going to be me. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I always look at it as like, who has the most views and who are the most popular guys. So to be honest, I was sitting there like, yeah, who's it going to be? <laughs> like, uh, Not because I even put myself in the equation. And I remember getting a DM from him and it really touched me. He was just like, nah, man, I really like what you do. Let's give it a shot. And uh, yeah, I joined that and it's been rocking and rolling ever since. And the last thing I do for my Destiny contingent, for the people who still love me for just Destiny stuff, I do the last word, my good friend Ebontis, and now Ty Guy Travis from IGN. So that's our uh, Destiny podcast on Thursday. So that's kind of like the history oh, yeah. of the IOP. podcast superstar himself. <laughs> You know, he runs one of the best S- Xbox podcasts out there with the ILP. You know what I mean? He always hates when I say that. I hate when you say that. He always hates when I say that. But it's true. It's true. You, we, can, we you are... can deny it all you want, but you know it's true. We I, have um, a affinity for Xbox for sure. We're not going to deny that. I, I absolutely love guesting on ILP. I, 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 have like, I have like limited amounts of time. And I, I often get asked to guest on shows and stuff like that. And, um, you know, uh, like, I love guesting on any podcast, but guesting on IOP is just so so much fun. You guys have, like, such great chemistry. And, man, I got a bone to pick with King, man, because... Ooh, what do you do? He's got me into buying statues now. Ooh, I, yeah, he's, infe- true. he's infected Ooh. me with it. Like, I bought the, what? I bought the di- that 650-pound Diablo statue, man. Oh, that's amazing. I've seen that. That's, a, nice. that's like, $780. <laughs> I, li- I literally can't afford it like i'm looking at, i'm like i'm scared to look at my bank bank balance after this christmas now so i thought well i'll buy it it was just a moment of madness like over tiredness and just oh my god now now like i just got all this buyer's remorse but like like how do i even how could i even return something that big you know so i just thought screw it man it's 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 just that's just my life now i'm a statue guy like uh law lo- like king. Okay. King of statues, yeah, it's a dark path, man. He, he got me for one. He got me on Silver Surfer, yeah. and he got me for um. I, I'm old cartoon. I'm old, so there's a lot a cartoon called Battle of the Planets. I uh, think called G Force and Gotcha Man in Japan, and I used to love those cartoons. He got me on one too, so I bought one of his ones. 
his statues too. Oh, oh, wow. Dark awesome. path. Well, you know, for this show, it's it's kind of like it's going to be unstructured, right? Uh, we oh, don't completely unstructured because yeah. I'm the one who structures everything on the other podcast we do. <laughs> and uh, as you can tell, Jez was so prepared for this one. So, yeah, yeah. But, oh man. Well, yeah. Okay. I says it's not it's not the most prepared podcast in the world. Um and uh yeah, so we're just sort of going to we're going to riff. We're going to yeah. riff on uh, exactly, you know, I suppose what we need to do is look through the past year, really. Mm-hmm. Because we are wrapping up 2022, moving into 2023. This year's been rough. I'm sure you guys will agree with me for for an ex, for Xbox fans, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Cog, how yes. do you feel about this year in Xbox? Well, you know, you generally? know, Jazz. So, Jazz, um, before we get heavy into this topic, because it's a heavy topic. It's, it is it heavy. Is. Topic, okay, it's heavy. You know, this year wasn't so great. 2023 looks pretty damn great, amazing, right? Mm-hmm. Can we just start with something a little bit lighter, like the fact that you went on a TV show and they couldn't hear you? <laughs> Can we just, we already you know, talked I, about that. I, I, we, no, I made fun of you about that. I got to hear Lord Cognito talk about it. <sighs> you know what I mean? Come on, Cog, come on. Uh, it, it, do, you, do you know, you know? about this, Cog? Yes, I do. I follow you very intently. And um, yeah, I I saw my man, Jess Corden, tweet. Looked like a very promising, prominent, you know what I'm saying, news outlet. I'm like, oh, wow, this looks cool. I got to see. Once I see overlay, it it looked like you were on like the the United States, you got to be on the German or UK version of of CNN. It looked like something you were doing big. I was like, okay, this looks good. I got to (laughs) see. And I'm like, all right, is it me? Like, I can't hear Jazz. So I'm fiddling, <laughs> I'm fiddling with my, like, because I'm watching, like, the in-browser in Twitter, and I'm like, oh, Twitter's acting up. How come I can't hear him? And then I'm like, wait. And everyone's commenting, like, <laughs> face bomb, what's going on? And I'm like, oh, um, no, not my guy. And I, I, you know what it is, brother? I felt your pain to my core. Because I'm like, man, I know what that feels like. And it's like a big <laughs> moment. And something goes wrong. And I like, bro, I get depressed when I happens. Like, if it's a big show and I have like a, a technical issue or I just can't, ILP won't work. Or I remember like Attic would have to save. I would panic. I would melt down. I'd be like, bro, it's not working. What's going on? So I don't know how much time you had to prepare. Zero. But I oh, felt, oh, see, that's what I figured. I figured that's what it was. Because I was like, there's no way. He would have gotten that straightened out before, if whatever the issue was. So, but yeah, I, I, mm. I felt your pain on that one. I, then I heard, I watched Xbox Two and Red just clouded. <laughs> yeah, See, yeah. You know, it's not often. Yeah. It's not often I get to make fun of Jazz. Normally, he gets to make fun of me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm gonna stretch this out as often. <sighs> Plus, you know, Poor twenty. Cog. It's it's like it's like the it's a perfect end capper to 2022, right? <laughs> you, you start out. You start out the year with ABK, with Activision, with with Cognito calling me at like six o'clock in the morning, trying to wake oh, me yeah. up, being like, "Ryan, Ryan, what are you doing? Ryan, wake up!" Oh, right, yeah. and then we close out 2022 with Jez Corden being interviewed as like a um, expert witness, or not an expert witness, but like someone with uh, expertise on the background of it. And nobody can hear a word that he says. It's just <laughs> mm, mm, caps off a beautiful, beautiful oh, year. Well, they, they gave me like 15 minutes to prepare. So clearly I wasn't the first choice for their guest. You know, mm-hmm. so like, mm-hmm. like I was like, I was scrambling. I just set up like a bunch of new equipment because I've got a right review, like new Bluetooth dock. So I hadn't tested it with the mic and stuff like that. And, um, but apparently they captured the audio on their end and they said they were going to they were going to reinsert it in a rerun. I don't oh. know if they will. So they they did capture some of the audio but um mm. but yeah it was it was it was silent. Um <sighs> but I didn't feel bad about it because they did only give me 15 minutes to prepare. And I was like, well, That's you know, true. if you and the and the the producer on Skype was like, oh, it's live TV it happens. You know, so you know, I didn't. I didn't really feel bad about it. I just thought it was funny, and also the the clip went viral because you know, yeah. it, it would it wouldn't have gone viral if I'd said something intelligent. So, <laughs> so you know, or, or if, was if that was me, so good press, right? If that was me, and I was you know on television, and what happened to you happened to me, and 
I, I wouldn't have shared it. I'd have been like, God, I hope nobody nobody saw this. <laughs> and you know what? It probably if you probably didn't say anything, nobody probably would have known either. No, it's you know. jazz though. Like I love that he that you had fun with it. Like he's just like it's this is like the peak moment. It just goes down here from here. <laughs> I <laughs> well, love I, it. Like that's so you, Jazz. That's uh, so you, brother. I, I knew people would sh- I knew it was funny, you know, and people would share it. I think it's got like According to to Twitter's, because you can see Twitter's views, views now. It's got it's got like eight hundred thousand views, which is amazing. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. that's amazing. But yeah, it's like the scarecrow one to one says in chat. Own the moment. So exactly. That's what I did on the moment, and you know, you can't laugh at yourself. You can't, Who yeah. can you laugh at? Yeah. Right? I'm sure. I'm sure both of you will eventually have moments like this where you where you <laughs> end up on a on you know some sort of live situation with with uh, some sort of major outlet, and then there's there's technical issues and then i'll get to laugh how about that <laughs> oh yeah i'm working on it don't put that evil on us Jez. Um, don't put that evil on us yeah well we'll see we'll see very wise man should we get into some should we get into some deep topics about the year are, are you ready to go deep let's go you ready deep. to go deep let's i want to get deep. i want to get cognito Give us your <clears throat> general, your general feeling about Xbox's 2022 before we go into 2023, which should be probably mm-hmm. a little bit more optimistic. How do you mm-hmm. feel about 2022 for Xbox? How's it gone? What are the what are the highs and lows for you over the past year of gaming? It doesn't um, have to be just Xbox, just gaming in general. No, gaming has been great. I mean, it's, it's it's been an overall good year for gaming, but as far as Xbox specifically, it's been rough. I've had this conversation with um with Ram before and. I did, I did document this as probably top five worst years for Xbox, mm-hmm. and the reason why I say it is that, you know, it's look games get delayed, we get that, but I think it was the double whammy Ooh. of Redfall and Starfield at the same time, and I don't know about you, Jess, but Starfield is like my most anticipated game. Right, mm. like talking A list, A team kind of Bethesda, Todd Howard coming out making a new IP. You're talking space, right? You're talking, you know, the great frontier of that. And, and I'm just so excited. Just the idea of anything Elder Scrolls Z in space just excites me because those games are like literally like my favorite type of games. So you got that. And I think me and you are both Mass Effect fans. So there's yeah. like there's a crew. There's so much going on with it. And it's very ambitious, right? And then, you know, you look at Redfall and you're like, hey, you know, I, I listen to my boy Rand, right? And he always tells me, yo, arcane, arcane, right? Mm-hmm. And I listen, you know, listen to Maddie plays. Like he he is like so arcane, right? And then I like vampires. So I'm like, okay, this is like a little cool thing. Cog is about his co-op. So it was. I think if it was if it was one of them, I'd be like, okay. But two major first party releases delayed, and we get it. It was the right decision. No one said it was wrong, but it was such a punch to the gut. And the fact that there was no plan B, so to speak, on the first party from a triple A standpoint, because game, let's be clear, games did come out. You know, I did enjoy. I enjoyed the hell out of Grounded. I enjoy. I'm. I enjoyed the hell out of Pentiment. But those are kind of what you consider kind of either smaller games and not that big spectacle game that you know you expect from Xbox first party. And um, I just look at it as, as a major blow. Then we look at the, you know, the FTC situation. You know, with Call of Duty. And for the record, you know, I remember that day when they they announced the deal. I mean, announced that they were looking to acquire, you know, Activision Blizzard King. And I'm just like, wow, this is huge. Now, full transparency, I'm not a big Call of Duty guy anymore. Like those days, because to me, it was just rinse and repeat with the series. Those days are kind of over for me. But I do like Blizzard. And then I'm like, okay, the king kind of puts them in a mobile space. And I ain't going to lie to you, Jazz. Like, I'm not a Call of Duty guy anymore. But if you tell me Call of Duty is going to be in Game Pass. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> then maybe i'd be interested to in coming back and check it out what's going on so it intrigued me and then i started thinking about you know all the old ips that that activision controls that's been dormant because let's be honest they've been kind of like a call of duty sweatshop like it's just like it's yeah. like stop what you're doing and, and make call of duty like my beloved high moon studios that make the greatest transformer games of all time relegated to call of duty 
Vicarious Visions, you know, all these studios that I love that made games separately on their own, you know, so I just thought about the possibilities. I remember when Phil came out and said, you know, the, their IPs that they're looking at, you know, a bringing back and it, then it really started to excite me. So then, you know, hearing about the deal, hearing about where they're going with it and then to have the deal blocked. Ooh, that was that was rough, you know, because. I'm the impression, you know, that I, I thought the deal was going to go through, to be honest. I, I didn't think that, that we would get to where we are now. So we have yeah. that. And then to cap the year, and I know I've been listening to Xbox 2, Jazz, and I've heard your frustration. Oh, <laughs> and yes. To, yeah, to, to, to <laughs> end the year off with the Game Awards was extremely disappointing. And, you know, I get it. You know, a lot of people say, hey, 2023, the, the games are coming and stuff like that. But here's the thing. You, you have to, what I consider, read the room. And the base is hurting. The base is hurting right now. This was, this was a year that was, was lost. Now, I'm not going to say it was completely lost from the standpoint of there were no games. There were great games. I, I, there's a, there was a, a great amount of indie games and a lot of discovery and game pass that I really enjoyed. Games that I have never would have played that I'm like, wow, these are gems in game pass. But a lot of people wanted the big exclusives. So what happens now is that the game awards happen. And I have to, I have to blame them for this. This is my, my personal feelings because... They set the precedent. They show the Xbox Series console on the Game Awards. They showed Hellblade at the Game Awards. They showed Hellblade again at the Game Awards, right? True. They showed um, Perfect Dark, Dark yeah. right, at the Game Awards. So they've set the expectation that they value the Game Awards. And I, at first, I didn't understand it, but now I got it because I'm like, you know what? There's going to be, instead of doing it all on your own show, which you know is Xbox-centric, you have a show where there's non Xbox audience could look at it and say, you know what? That looks pretty cool. Maybe I'll pick up an Xbox because of Hellblade or whatever, right? So, in my mind, you had a bad year. You didn't show anything, mostly for the, you know, your, your major games got delayed. This is the time to build hope up. And the last thing I'll say is that, and Rand, we've had this conversation, which is I wasn't a fan of of the Bethesda, the, the E3 showcase, so to speak, with the mentality of we're only going to show you 12 months and that's it. Because even though it set proper expectation as far as what to show, it killed the hope and the wonder moments. You know what I mean? It killed the like, hey, just one more thing, guys. <laughs> There's none of that because you know all you're getting from this to there is these games and that's it. So then the Game Awards became my wonder moment. I'm like, okay, well, maybe they show, you know, one of those those secret projects Jez is talking about. Maybe we get... I, I doubt we would have got a Hellblade because I'm like, you can't show the game three times and you ain't got to release that. <laughs> but maybe you show a vow. Maybe you show something to get the fans hopeful for this great 2023 that we all expect to happen. And they didn't do it. They fell flat. They got blocked by the FTC the day before. Phil's there. He's got the face. And it just <laughs> goes downhill. And I'm like, oh, no, Xbox. Not like this. Right? You got to think. So, I mean, that's just <laughs> what it was, man. It was just, it was a great year for Game Pass and Discovery. I think that literally saved them. But as far as, you know, first party output and as far as the morale of the the morale is beaten down and we we need to be lifted back up i'm confident they will do that i'm still confident about 2023 but this year was definitely top 5 worst xbox year <laughs> so i have to put it up there well, what would be the worst year i'm i'm just curious because i i think i have my own what well, well, in your opinion what is the worst year xbox has ever had i think we we have to go back to the the Xbox One launch, man. I, th I think it's yeah. The we, launch or just like the reveal, like that whole year, reveal. like the reveal yeah, and yeah. Like leading up, and like all all the all the outlets making fun of Xbox, everybody hating Xbox uh, yeah. for doing all those things. So if that's so, if if 2013 is number one, yeah, 2013 is bad. <laughs> what's number what's number two? Ooh, number two. What what came out of the year Crackdown launched? <laughs> Cause that was... and, it was Crackdown and Gears of War or Gears Five. Oh, Gears Five would have saved that then, I guess. Yeah. Oh, they've second. had a few. They've had a few pretty dry years, haven't they? Over the past yeah. few years, everything feels like it's still in a holding pattern. You know, yes. I can't. I couldn't even tell you like what what I consider to be Xbox's worst year because I can't even remember what happened last week, let alone years in the past. But I do. I do kind of agree that this 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 year has been a standout year for like pain 
and drudgery. Like it's it's not even like it's not even <laughs> yeah it's it's not even. <laughs> Pain and drudgery, for, 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 and in the in the Xbox context, it's not even just like the lack of AAA games, right? So also yeah. this stuff with the Activision deal, the roller coaster, oh, yeah. the oh. back and forth, the non-stop droning bullshit from from mm. legal entities and and ignorant polit- politicians uh, reminding us time and time again they just don't understand technology in general, let alone the video game <laughs> industry. So it's just it's just this non-stop sort of stream of irritation. I suppose you could say, and then the whole thing like Xbox skipping the Game Awards that was irritating as well. Um, yeah. yeah, it's like Isaac Gentry and Chat says, Thank goodness for Game Pass and backlogs. I mean, yeah, I mean, yes. in, a, in, a, in a gaming context, there's still been a lot to play, you know. Oh, I, yeah. got, I got Evil, Evil, Evil West up on the is it Evil West? Is that the name of it? I can't remember yeah. what it's called. Evil West up on this on the screen for those who are watching live, and um. You know, it's uh, that was a pretty good game. So there's there's been some really good games to play here and there. There's been some wins for Xbox Game Pass. Oh yeah, I mean High on oh, Life you know. was a what, what about High on Life? High on Life, God, you, yeah. you play that? I didn't get a chance to play it because I, I'm no. doing uh, Midnight Suns and and then I had a, yeah. I, I just finished that and I had a fantastic. But High on Life is actually next, and yeah, I had that. Look, I'm a huge fan. I told you I liked Grounded a lot, way more than I thought I did. You know, I thought that was. A really special moment for Obsidian. Pentiment is a very niche game, unique based on the time period, but I absolutely love that. You know, there I loved As Dust Falls. Like I was a huge As Dust Falls fan. I thought that was criminally underrated, the story that they told. And the other mm-hmm. game for me, I know you're a big uh, battle royal guy, and I try to tell people, man, Naraka Blade Point was an amazing pickup for them. Like that game is fantastic. It is literally a martial arts fighting game in that kind of kind of setting but it's unique it has good traversal the art style they got now they got a campaign mode unique characters suit like game pass literally saved them from me because i had so much to play so i know people are like yeah first party first party but the thing i, I do want to give them credit is this and i've had this conversation with colin and his frustration with sony right now is like it's only the kind of hashtag just one triple I'm sure game. he's super excited that they might be doing Last of Us Part 3, right? <laughs> See, he's getting frustrated, right? Because now you're hearing uh-huh. the rumors of, um, you know, Horizon being remade yep. again, right? You're Horizon <laughs> remade, Horizon uh, MMO co-op game, Last of Us 2 director's cut, mm-hmm. Last of Us Part 3. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're absolutely right. And, and see, me, where me and him share is that he likes when Sony was losing, so to speak, during the PS3 era because it forced them to get weird. It forced them to make these kind of cooler indie games and, and get creative. And I got to give Xbox some credit. Now, I know we've been ranking on them for a bit, but as far as like weird, niche, like creative, you know, you look at a game like High on Life, right? You look at at Vampire Survivor, you look at these games as Dust Falls, Pentiment, and I know people are like, this is not the AAA, I get it, but you have to remember, there's also, a, if you're selling this service, you have to have a diversity of games, and what I like is that these games are allowed to come out, right, and now you've developed an audience of people who may not have ever even thought they would be interested, but because of Game Pass, the, the barrier of entry is so low, you go, okay, let me try this. And then you have this thing like Vampire Survivors, right? You have this thing like As Does Falls and all these other kind of games that fall into this ilk. And if it wasn't for Game Pass, that's why I still think the vision is correct, right? It's just that we need to supplement all of these other smaller kind of games with the big meal games, the big AAA game, and then it's Basically, what I see is when I look at 2021, as bad as 2022 has been, I look at 2021, and 2021 represents the vision almost working at its peak, right? You got like, you know, um, Flight Simulator comes out, right? And well, critically reviewed. You got Psychonauts, right? You had Age of Empires. You had Halo Infinite. You had Forza Horizon. So you had that cadence of pretty much every quarter, either a major game and then supplemented by all these other smaller games. And that, to me, is the true vision of what Game Pass could be. I think the mistake is we all thought that was just going to continue into 2022. But yeah. that's why I still have hope for them. I, I still look at them like, if things land, and the key point, the games have to be good. Because we can't have us wait for <laughs> this long. <laughs> the games ain't good. But if the games are good, 
that represents what it could be. So I think that's what it is. And I do like the weirdness of them. So that's where I'm at. Was 2021 also the year where Outriders and MLB The Show dropped into Game Pass? Ooh, yes. Indeed it was. Yeah. Oh, yes. yes. So you even, you even had those third party deals cracking off in 2021. And Back well. for Blood as well. Back for Blood came. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, was, yeah. that was last year I thought, okay, this is when Game Pass is going to turn the corner. All right? Yes. Because we've been, you know, contrary to what Jim Ryan has, has said to the regulators and behind closed doors to PlayStation employees uh, <laughs> about how Game Pass has been around for seven years or whatever he said. Um, you know, we got to like 2020 and 2021. We were like, man, I think the one thing Game Pass needs is it needs like big AAA third party games releasing into the service, right? Because mm-hmm. you get incredible indie titles, um, you get Microsoft's first party. And it's like, really, they're only missing, you know, some big third-party games, right? Yes. And we thought that was like, okay, MLB The Show. I remember when Ooh. Xbox fans were like shouting from the rooftops, not only were we finally getting a, a baseball game, but it was Sony's baseball game. And not only were we finally getting that baseball game, we were getting it for free on Xbox Game Pass while the PlayStation Ooh. fans weren't, Right. It was like, oh, and, and then soon after that, it was Outriders. And people were like, is this the new normal for Game Pass? Yeah. And Back for Blood at the end of the year, it was like, oh, wow, this, 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 you know. And I think even at that E3, they announced that Plague's Tale Requiem was going to be coming to Game Pass, right? Yes. So everybody started thinking, all right, it seems like the bigger third parties are on board. We're going to start seeing more uh, AAA games at the service day and date. And then 2022 came around this year, and you didn't really see that much of it. Granted, a lot of it was shifted, right? Like Warhammer, I mean, I don't know if you consider, well, like Warhammer Dark Tide came out for PC, but the console version got delayed. Atomic Heart got delayed. Stalker 2 got delayed. A lot of the games that were supposed to come out ended up getting pushed. But one of the things that was decidedly missing was that you, outside of MLB The Show 2022 hitting Game Pass, was you didn't get another big triple a release into the service Mm -hmm. and looking at next year game pass i think 2023 and i don't know if you agree with me on this cog i think 2023 is going to be the best year for game pass ever i think it's Mm. prime to literally explode right Mm. you could start off the year with monster hunter rise and persona 3 and persona 4 uh, then you have like Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition. You go into February, you have something like Atomic Heart. Early March, you got Wo Long Fallen Dynasty. Yeah. You have the smaller games, you know, like the Case of Benedict Fox, Replaced, right? Not mm. to mention like the big games that Xbox is be essentially putting out between Redfall and Starfield and Forza Motorsport. It really all kind of seems like it's building up to a cadence where 2023, I dare say, could be the breakout year. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. I, I mean, I don't know if that's necessarily the right way to say it because I almost kind of feel like 2021 was the breakout year when you have MLB The Show and Outriders and Back for Blood and Halo and Forza Horizon 5, right? Uh, that in like the numbers jump because you had seen like even before then it was like, um, like 10 million users. And then I think, um, you know, the Bethesda thing went through or yes. was an, and it was like, they announced like 14 or maybe it was 18. And then it was like 25 at the beginning of this year. Like game pass really just kind of exploded, uh, these last couple years where, you know, it was in the, in the 2020s, it was very low. And now we're like speculating whether or not it's above 30. And then you look at the games that are coming out now, na- next year and i'm gonna imagine there's gonna be you know a lot more high profile indie titles but it does almost seem to me in a way that like maybe the the door is closed on third party triple a to a certain extent i don't know Mm. if you feel that same way it's like so i guess the question is do you feel that next year could be the breakout year for game pass but at the same time also uh, that third parties have kind of been like starting to like third party AAA, not mind you, like starting to kind of give it the cold shoulder. Or what do you think? What are your thoughts on that? I mean, I, listen, I, I've been on record uh, with the whole bad 2022 year. I've stayed firm that 2023 is going to be amazing for them. I, I really feel strongly about it. I think that that's the year everything lines up. Now, granted, things could get delayed, things could change, but 
as it stands right now, I'm fairly confident because I look at, like I said, that the games that were supposed to come out this year, the Redfall, Starfield, the Forza, right? Then you you combine that with all those kind of game pass. Because to me, it, it's when, when a game, a third party game launches in game pass, to me, it almost holds that value of, of it being exclusive. Because when I look at a Woe Long, you know, and I have... I have all the consoles, but if I look at Woe Long and Game Pass, that's where I'm getting it, right? It's the same, right. It's the same mentality when X, um, MLB The Show and Outriders came out. It's a no-brainer, right? So I look at that. I look at the PC presence, and I know, what was it, the, the deal that they did, I believe, with Riot Games? Oh, yeah, that Valor. Th- that's going on right now. You know, the, yeah. the Valorant, um, the, the League of Legends stuff. A little you know? birdie. Oh, yeah. A little birdie tells oh, me that oh. next year could be the year Wild Rift drops on uh, Xbox mm-hmm. as well. So like yeah. League of Legends, Wild Rift is like the the casual the well, <laughs> it's it's supposedly casual, but I tried playing it mobile. It's, it's pretty hardcore to me. Uh, it's <laughs> it's the it's their mobile version of uh, League of Legends, but um, they're yeah. they're yeah. they're porting it to consoles, and uh, mm. from what I've heard, it could drop in twenty twenty three. So you get all Ooh. that content for Wild Rift with Game Pass mm-hmm. as well, which is thousands of dollars rumors aren't there rumors that valorant might be making its way to consoles yeah i could have sworn yes. like maybe there's been job listings or something yeah wow, there's there is a job listing for valorant hitting console as well which you know i think like in the in the current economic climate where you know growth is stalled they're kind of looking for obvious ways to grow some of their games and one obvious way is to bring it to new platforms right so i wouldn't right. be surprised if you see valorant on console next year or league of legends wild rift as well Huge. and yeah and xbox has that exclusive deal with, with yes. for all the content which is it's, mm-hmm. huge, it's huge you know i'm really mm-hmm. interested to you know find out how well that's boosted xbox game pass on pc yeah, i'd be especially. interested in seeing because remember they talked uh satya was what they say 130 percent year over year growth at one point for yeah. pc game pass and mm-hmm. people were trying to figure out what the numbers were yeah you know instead, i would love to instead see... of two people now it's four people <laughs> such a, he's such a hater. He's such a hater. I'm lately. joking. I'm joking. You know? yeah, um, uh, I, I, I think that 2023 is, is really prime. Listen, the games have to be good. If Starfield, I think the key for me, well, depending on the rumors now of Red Falls release, because I thought Red Fall might be a little earlier, but, you know, I think the key to me is Red Fall to kind of set the tone. Like, say if Red Fall comes out. And it falls between that, you know, high 80, you know, or mid 80 Metacritic, right? And it, it really does well. Arcane, cooperative, vampire hunter kind of game. They set the tone off. You have that. I'm not too worried about Forza Motorsport. Turn 10, I mean, those guys, even though I'm not the simulation racer guy anymore, I'm more of a playground horizon guy. Um, I recognize that is the, you know, that is top tier. That is the, the creme de la creme of, of, one of simulation racing. So I don't anticipate anything crazy there bad there and then i look at you know starfield i mean if starfield does what we expect it to do and this is todd howard's kind of first new ip in a long time he's been doing nothing but you know elder scrolls and kind of fallout for a while so there's a lot of pressure there and he's put pressure on himself but if that hits i tell people all the time i was around for oblivion you know, I was around for Morrowind. I was around, you know, for Skyrim. When these games hit, these are zeitgeist games. Yeah. These are games that when you see people put up all their clips like, oh, my God, I was over here and I was at this planet and this happened. Or when you played, you know, you saw the first drag, you did your first spell and chant and all that in Skyrim. I remember it. And people, it, it has that effect, that Elden Ring-like effect that we saw earlier this year. Right. Where it's just like everyone's playing. Everyone's having these unique experiences. These are games and worlds that you absolutely live in. And if Starfield hits and does what we expect it to do, and let's just say, Red, for God forbid, it, like a, a 90 something Metacritic, let's just say it's that good. That sets the tone that says this is an Xbox exclusive. This is, so to speak, Xbox you know, under their, you know, leadership. I know people, there's a lot of purity talk about, oh, this game was created before. I don't care about that. My thing is, are, is the game good? I don't care when it was created. I don't care how it was created. Is the game good on an Xbox platform? Yes, that's all that matters. 
and people forget. <laughs> people go, oh my God, I have to get this, right? So I think that really, Starfield probably is the biggest release for them because if that lands, now you change the conversation about game quality, who got games and all this other stuff, and it becomes, okay, I have to have an Xbox. I have to play this game. Oh, by the way, I, you know what? I could get it on Game Pass. Oh, I have a PC. The, the, the barrier for entry is so low with them, right? You could do so much. And, and of course, the last thing I want to mention too is, we got me and uh, me and Jess got share this one Diablo man. Mm. Oh yes, mm. Diablo, Diablo. I can't wait for you Diablo know, so much. You know, Kyle, you mentioned how big Starfield is, right? Mm. And I think I, I mentioned on Xbox too that it's like the biggest new IP release for Microsoft since Gears, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Honestly, you know what? Now I'm thinking about it. Let's go. Screw Gears. It's the what? biggest new IP release since Halo. <laughs> Oh, we because, put that on it? Let's go. Well, because you, you look at, like, Break what their games have done, like the Elder Scrolls you seriously games. You seriously? Hang on. I need to pause for a second. Are you <laughs> comparing <laughs> Are you comparing a Todd Howard game to Halo? I'm comparing in terms of are visibility. You, are you, are you putting of... Todd Howard, the legend, and his games in the same category as Halo? I don't agree with that. I think well, it doesn't matter if you agree with it or not. <laughs> it's just what it is. It's since Halo. My point mm. is Xbox hasn't had a brand new IP release of this caliber and of mm. this potentiality, that je word that Jez uses, right? Mm -hmm. Since then. Like the, the the like when you look at like their track record, you look at what Elder Scrolls have done, has done. You look at what Fallout has done and how big those games are. Like how big yep. Skyrim was. Mm. Right, and you look at the new IPs that Xbox has released over the course of you know years. You know, Halo's obviously the big one. Fable was at one point pretty big, but hopefully it comes back even bigger. Gears is obviously you know right there. You have the Forza series, which probably right now Forza Horizon. You could make an argument is probably like the mm -hmm. biggest, it's probably maybe even bigger than Halo at this point because Halo's been brought down so low. Uh, but then you think about like, well, any like you look at the Xbox One generation, Rise one and done, Quantum Break one and done, Sunset Overdrive one and done, Recore one and done. A lot, it, basically, the Xbox One was the forgotten generation. Like the only we only got sequels to Ori, which were was was amazing, but nothing on the level of a Starfield. So it's like you look at the 360, and it's like okay, there was Gears. There was Forza Horizon at the end. There was a bunch of Connect stuff that just died on the vein because of Connect. So honestly, like when you when you think about it, about what Starfield can do for the Xbox brand in the minds of gamers, in the minds of the public, what it can do for Game Pass on console, what it can do for Game Pass on PC, what it's going to do on on Steam, what's going to do on Xbox in general, you know, like. It's probably going to be Bethesda's most played game ever, judging you know from all the different ways you can stream your Xboxes, right? Uh, hell, I would even imagine you know that rumored uh, X. Well, not rumored. We know it exists, but the Xbox Game Pass Family Plan will be out everywhere by the time Starfield comes out, right? So you're talking about a game that is, uh, I think, like. The, the the impact that Starfield is going to have on this generation of consoles and how people view Xbox moving forward, I don't think you can quantify it. That's how big it is. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it's like essentially the biggest thing to hit Xbox new IP wise since like the OG Halo and then Halo Two. Yeah, right? JJ JJ and Chat makes a good point. Sea of Thieves is Xbox's biggest IP since Forza Horizon. Yeah. Well, actually, you're right. Yeah, I totally, yeah. I totally forgot about that. Sea of Thieves became mm -hmm. a massive success. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not for us, but it's it's a pretty yeah, well, damn that's, that's big the reason game. why I don't I don't really think about yeah. Sea of Thieves because it's not for me. So yeah. when I um, when I look at Starfield, and I'm Starfield just like, man, is, um, the the implications of yeah, one, yes. if it's great, and two, if it um, launches like you know completely yeah. f bug free which ain't going to be possible but you know, you get what i'm saying right? oh, here we go Co here we go cognio said it best it's a it's a zeitgeist moment i think i can't i can't, like i was joking about like how dare you compare it to halo but it's kind of true 
I don't feel, I don't really feel like Halo is a zeitgeist moment in gaming in the same way that Skyrim was or the same way that Minecraft is, you know, where it's sort of changing everything, you know. I know Halo did a lot for console FPS, but it's it's like if it wasn't Halo, it would have been something else, you know. <laughs> I think like um it's not like how Minecraft completely changed the entire industry or Oblivion's horse armor changed the entire industry, you know, kind of You thing. mean the ten dollar horse armor? Yeah, yeah, ten dollar horse armor. It's, it's, it's the reason I we now have battle passes, and I bought it, man. I bought that horse armor. Yeah, I, we ruined, we ruined the industry. We ruined yes, the whole game. We ruined it. <laughs> we uh, did it. Yeah, it's um, it's uh, yeah. I think I think I think it's going to be a special moment, and I'm so I'm so sure that there's going to be all this sort of like long tail aspect to Starfield, where people are adding whole expansions to some of those you know uh, procedurally generated planets through mods. Yeah, and I re- there's going to be a mod store. You know it. There's going to be paid mods for Starfield. I think that's the catch they haven't announced yet. Is that they're going to do paid mods, and people aren't going to be happy about it. But you know, it, it's it's what makes Minecraft such a, a huge, huge success story. Um, the fact that anyone can make a map pack or a game mode for Minecraft and then sell it on the Minecraft marketplace. There are companies who have literally millions of dollars of turnover, and all they do is make maps for Minecraft. It's crazy, wow. and they they wow. want that for Starfield. I'm sure of it. But um, but anyway, mm-hmm. it's gonna be a big deal. Qu- so mm-hmm. 2022 is behind us, right? Mm-hmm. Get it all by our systems uh, about the year, what have you. Now we look towards the future, right? Look mm-hmm. to 2023. And Fletch has an interesting comment here because it kind of leads into what we're going to talk about next. He says, I don't think we're going to see Starfield before November 23rd, mm. right? So I'm going to pose this question to you, Mr. Mm-hmm. ILP, Mr. Mm-hmm. Lord Cognito, Mr. Define Duke. Mm-hmm. What does 2023 look like from you? Like, how are we starting the year off? Is Starfield going to be delayed, like Fletch says, to November? You know, or is it going to come out when Microsoft says before June? How many games from Xbox First Party do you think are on the docket? Is my beloved Hellblade 2 coming out in 2023? Give me Uh. your layout your perfect 2023 you know we mentioned the bad about last year i'm Mm -hmm. sure everybody's like kind of tired of talking about how bad the year is and quite frankly so am i Mm -hmm. and 2023 is right on the horizon so Mm -hmm. give me if you were in charge of pr if you were in charge of marketing how would you structure 2023 Wow, this is the big one because uh, me and you've had some very passionate discussions about. We sure this. have. <laughs> <laughs> and um, as far as the lineup for 2023 and how things should be placed, and I'm of the firm belief that Starfield is so important, right? That mm-hmm. you have to allow Todd and the team as much time as possible because you cannot miss. You cannot have a Halo Infinite situation with Starfield. You cannot have Craig Face running around here <laughs> looking bad and upset people, well, right? To be fair, to be fair though, Kyle. Uh-huh. Halo Infinite's problem wasn't how it launched. Halo Infinite's problem was that it didn't have anything Contact, right. after launch. Correct, correct. Which it, it so, didn't have the legs to support itself for. Yeah, it didn't have any post launch content. Correct. You know, correct. if If Halo launched and then season one or season two had what they have now with like, oh, Forge is ready, Mm co-op is ready, Mm -hmm. uh, the custom matchmaker is ready, Halo would probably be be in a different state as as it is. Absolutely. The launch wasn't the problem. It was the lack of content. Where Starfield, obviously... It's not. It doesn't. It's not. Li- uh, it's not a, your typical live service game. So it doesn't need the extra content. If they have an expansion a year later, that's a different thing. So the launch is everything. So it's a little. Dist- but I get what you're saying. Like we talked. We right. just talked about how important this game is for Xbox in the future right. of how they're perceived. Mm-hmm. They have to. They 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 can't release a buggy broken product. Is essentially right. what you're saying, right? Yeah. Starfield cannot be half baked. It has to have as much polish as we understand. It's an extremely ambitious game. There's a lot of systems to it. There's a lot of things going to it, but it has to have a, be allowed as much polish as possible. And that's the game you, you're going to kind of showcase. So for me, 
I look at it like, okay, the Game Pass deals that they have that we know of, you know, we talk about the Wolong, the Lies of P, that there's a lot of good games that they've kind of associated themselves with Game Pass in, in that space, the third party space, that I think they'll be fine. But as far as the first party, I think you have to give Starfield time. And if Starfield needs more time, even though they said 11 11 at one point, mm-hmm. you know, even though they said this game that we show you is going to come out within the next, what is it, 12 months, you know, Starfield comes up. Right. Even though they said all of that, if Todd mm-hmm. comes to you and says, we need a little bit more time to get the the, 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 the dialogue system, the planet, you give it system. to him. No ass. No problem. Exactly. No problem. We had a little issue, Phil, with the procedural generation and the systems that we use in creation engine. You know, we just need another month or what you give him the time. This it releases that important. So in my opinion, if Starfield falls to the fall of 2023, I don't have a problem with it because okay. I still think you have enough to supplement it. So if I'm marketing, it's all in on Starfield, right? Forza to me is the safe bet. Forza is whenever that comes out, whether that let's just say it's summer, you know, in the middle of the year, whenever that comes out. That's your solid. You're gonna kill the, the European market. You're gonna you're gonna really have you're gonna have ray tracing in the game. You're gonna it's gonna look phenomenal. I'm not worried about Forza Motorsport at all, to be honest with you. I mean, yes, it can slip on a banana peel. Who knows? But in my opinion, based on their track record, turn ten, not worried. Mm-hmm. Redfall is the key. Now, obviously, this is where I lean on Jez. <laughs> you know, according to the latest rumors, I was under the impression that Redfall might be a top of the year experience. So if it's not, and it's this alleged May experience now, because they need six more weeks and more time for Arcane, and that's right there, that be middle of the year, you have to allow that too. So I just think, to me, Starfield, you push back as far as possible if it needs if it needs time. Needs um, right. And and to your point, Rand, where you're gonna hate me? Oh no! Is, don't do this is, to me. I will do it. Oh, no, don't do it. If your beloved Hellblade conflicts or is ready at around the same time as starfield which i'm I'm not which i now may think may be later it may not be but if it is let's say starfield is second half 2023 don't do it i just i just feel you can't let them coexist next to each other i think you can't let them cannibalize each other I, i they are too smart to pull an ea titanfall 2 battlefield situation you can't have that. You you have to space it out. Now, in your defense, Hellblade is a different type of a game. It's action. It's sensory. You know, you got Senua. You got the mental stuff going on. I can't wait to hear that in Dolby Atmos. I think it's going to be phenomenal. But, like, I can understand it being somewhat, you know, close proximity. But I just, I, I personally feel you could, you could push Hellblade or Avowed, if those two are ready, to the top of 2024 and still be okay and let Starfield dominate. I don't want them to make a mistake. You know, I would say it shouldn't be a mistake because Forza Horizon 5 and Halo Infinite proved that they can kind of coexist because they're completely different genres, so to speak. But I think you have to give Starfield that time to shine. And Game Pass is set up in such a way that it's like, okay, boom, that quarter is Starfield. Top of 2024, boom, it's Hellblade or whatever is ready, you know, kind of thing. The only way I acquiesce to your form of thinking if Hellblade is ready and you release it in the fall of 2023, only if Starfield is ready summer or that top half of 2023. Then I will give that to you, Rand. I'll say give him the beloved Hellblade kill the end of the year with that if it's ready right and that's it but i i just don't want them to overlap and cannibalize each other well, you see, my you see, right now. here's the thing mm-hmm. i want now i want prediction cog Ooh. right the, the the question is you talk about if it's if it's coming in the year if they need more time when is starfield releasing Whenever it's ready, I need. I need. I, I don't. I, well, you, tell me that. Tell me when it's ready. Give me a date. Put it. Put it online. We're betting here. You know. We're betting. Like I'm saying. Oh, we're not betting. Betting, but I'm just saying. Mm-hmm. You know. Like, okay. do you think Xbox is going to quote unquote live up to their promises and release Redfall, Starfield, Forza, Minecraft Legends before June, or do you think 
Starfield might get pushed further back, breaking their promise. Because you know people will be upset, be like, you promised these games <laughs> would come, and, and they didn't. So are uh, you of the belief? I guess this is a question. Are you of the belief? Because mm-hmm. we have a... Replicants are... Not Replicant. We have... um Yeah, he, Replicant says, if 2020... Because it sounds like you're saying this. Mm-hmm. If 2023 ends up being only Forza, Redfall, and Starfield... Only. <laughs> is that, that enough? Right? Only. You guys I'm just saying, you, you've asked Maddie this on Defining yes. Duke because we had a long conversation about this. You've asked plenty of people. I have. And they've all said to you, that's not enough, Cog. That's yeah. not enough. Yeah. So are you telling me that 2023, because <laughs> the way you positioned it about Starfield mm-hmm. being at the end of the year and, you know, Redfall and Forza maybe being the beginning of the year, it mm-hmm. sounds like, and, and that Hellblade and Nevald being pushed to 2024, it sounds like you are insinuating that that's all that's going to release outside of like my, Minecraft Legends and Age of Empires 4. Yeah, and stuff oh, like yeah, outside of that. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm, well, I'm, you know, Age of Empires 4 is a two year old PC game at that point oh, in time. My. You know what I'm saying? You know? Gamers, gamers kill me. Listen, I'm just listen. saying, bro. I, I, you know, I'm just, is this what you're saying? Is this what you're laying out for me? Is this I'm what I can to, expect? I am going to die on this hill. Because I, I clearly, I am the only, but I don't know if I've talked to Jez about this, but I'm clearly the only person who seems to be dying on this hill. Well, I disagree with gamers with this only enough. That's if what Replicant Starfield, said. Field, Redfall, Forza Motorsports, all these third-party games that we know to launch in uh, in Game Pass come out. And potentially, right, uh, Jez, some, uh, maybe some global publishing situations, you know, mm. get finalized and, mm. you know, sneak in. That is a massive year, especially if Starfield is amazing. If Starfield is game of the year worthy, how dare you gamers talk about is that enough? You see, that's the problem with you guys. It's like you always want more. (laughs) (laughs) My thing is, I get it, bro. I get it. Like, these games were supposed to come out last year, and now that's all you're getting. Bro, if the game is amazing, you're not going to say that when it drops, just like we talked before. It's like, let's just say, let's just say, put... Walk with me, Rand. Let's just say Starfield is the next Skyrim. Mm. Let's okay. just say, right? Now, let's say we know that right now, that it is. If that, if Skyrim doesn't drop this year, but you know it drops next year, and it's amazing, no one's going to care. Everyone's going to be having so much fun where they, or the planets they're flying out, the things that they're doing. It's that much of a game changer. So to me, all hands on deck, Starfield, make it great. <laughs> do what you got to do because gamers can talk. But when those releases come, people go crazy. Same thing I see in people like, I'm not going to buy Last of Us. Last of Us came, we saw the numbers, the remake to the remake, right? If people go out and flock. If the game is good, that's all that matters. And I'm telling you right now, that's a massive lineup for it. So the only thing I say is that, to your point, is if Hellblade, if Ninja Theory comes up and says, hey, Phil, we're ready to go, right? It, it's ready uh-huh. to go. I could see a scenario maybe they month or two apart. But if it's right at the same time or too close proximity, there's no need. There's no need to satisfy gamers' idea of I mean, all these things that they need to be doing when they are going to change the zeitgeist. That's just my thought. Fair enough. We, we do have some comments for you. We got uh, mm-hmm. Adlerun Grogo, which I'm sorry if I said your name wrong. He says, Starfield mm-hmm. isn't for everyone, though. Which is, that is true. true. Not everybody's going to be fair. interested in Starfield. That's fair. Uh, Fletch says, we kind of earned more, lol. <laughs> <laughs> Replicant, who actually asked this question, says, to follow up, I think the I think that we need to see more from I think we need to see more from Xbox Studios, not just Bethesda delivering sure, in sure. 2023. Sure. Um, Slickback says, Xbox can't win with these people if Xbox and Sony I doesn't agree. have any games next year. Third party releases alone will make 2023 huge. Now, I agree with him on that. Third party okay. always carries the consoles, regardless. Third party carried Xbox this year. The beginning of next year is ridiculously filled with mm-hmm. huge third party games from Hogwarts Legacy to Dead Space to, you know, um, uh, Star Wars Jedi Survivor to Resident Evil 4 to oh Diablo 4 to Street Fighter 6 mm-hmm. right like there are yeah there are tons of games in 2023 and that's true not mm-hmm. every, like 
the statistics show, even though people talk about exclusives, people talk about you know Starfield, people talk about God of War, people talk about yeah. Spider Man Two. People talk, for the, like, I gotta interrupt. I gotta interrupt. For the record, the, the same the standard y'all hold in Xbox Two with it better be because these uh-huh. games delayed. The game potential game of the year that Sony released was God of War Ragnarok. Uh huh. Gran Turismo. Right. Yes. What's the other release date? They, they, they made Horizon just, uh, Forbidden West. All delayed sure. game. Sure. <laughs> this is this is the Xbox Two, not no, the I, PlayStation I, I, Two. I, correct. But we, I just want to be clear that sure, a hundred percent. You're all right. Games that were promised in 2021. You're right. Delivered right. it and no one cares anymore. No sure. one's going up and saying, but 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 Sony, you 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 already said those were games you were gonna get. What else are you gonna give? <laughs> no one's saying that. Why is Xbox held to this different standard? I, I get it. They have to show and prove. I get it. The wait has been long. I get it. But if the games are good, you're not gonna care, Rand. Trust me when I tell you, you're not gonna care. You're gonna be like, I'm, I'm just like I'm just like sitting there listening to this, like knowing things that you guys don't know. You don't know shit. What are you talking about? Well, you know, with regards to Starfield being delayed. Oh, 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 okay. Yeah, I don't think Starfield's making it in the first half of the year. You don't think Starfield's making it? I mean, that's Mm -hmm. what Proven says in the chat. I think there's no chance Starfield doesn't release before summer. That's what he's saying. I think there's no um, chance Starfield. That's double negative there. So, yeah, I think uh, the, the reason for that is, um, the rumor about Redfall launching in May, I'm 95% sure that's true at the moment. Mm. So for me, if it's like do you, Starfield launch before Redfall, I don't think that's going to happen. So it's kind of mm. like if they if they were going to launch Starfield in June, would they really want to launch Redfall on top of Diablo and Starfield? I don't think they, they would. La- they launched... Forza and Halo literally on top of each yeah, other a week they're, apart. They're quite different genres, kind of. Really different. Yeah, and I kind of feel like Starfield, Diablo... What, and you and, think Redfall and Starfield are not different genres? They have overlap. They're action games. You fight. It's a fantasy action game. First person. I kind of feel like they do have more overlap than Forza and Halo. But, you know, I think, like... At first of all, I think Redfall being delayed till May is true. I've got, I've got, uh, that's, um, a car, what was his name? Akami, mm-hmm. is it Akami 13 or something like that on Twitter? I'm gonna, just going to look him up real quick because, uh, you know, he deserves the, the credit yes. for this because he was the first one to put it out there. So, um, yeah, Akami Games, Akami 13 underscore on Twitter said that, um, he's heard that the game's been pushed back internally by six weeks, currently targeting an early May release. I have corroborating information on that early May release now. So yeah. I, I think, I think that's accurate. You got Bethesda sources now? Maybe. Maybe. You didn't tell me that you didn't tell me any of this? Maybe. Maybe. Why am I finding out for the first time right now? What's going on? Maybe maybe it only happened like half an hour before the show, maybe. Oh. (laughs) Well, um, I mean, look, like, well, you also had documentation that Diablo 4 was coming out in April and clearly, you know, it came out in June. So there's, that's like a six. Well, you also said there was like a, in the documentation, there wasn't there like a six weeks window or something that they there was were looking a, at. There like, was a land. There was some kind of land this trip. Yeah, but that like same that same documentation said that the collector's edition had a candle in it. And how right, how, right. how could and I have, have possibly candle, yes. how could I have Ooh. possibly have guessed that? <laughs> so, <Right. laughs> so yeah, yeah, you know that okay, you so know that documentation you, was accurate. So but, both of you were thinking. I have document. Right I have documentation. Right. I'm just. I'm about just trying Redfall. to. I'm just trying to like six weeks isn't that big of a delay, right? If you if it was no. supposed to come out in May or April and it gets delayed to or it's supposed to come out in March or April and gets delayed to May, it's not a big deal. So both of you are basically trying to say to me, mm-hmm. Redfall's coming out in May, which okay, fine. That's that's fine. And you're basically saying that there's no way Starfield is releasing a month later in June. Well, I just uh, I just wouldn't expect that. I mean, maybe they will do it. Maybe they'll just be like, "Well, Starfield's ready in June." Let's well, I mean, just ship it. I mean, Diablo's for, Diablo Diablo Four is coming out June sixth, and then but Final Fantasy sixteen is coming out June twenty second. Jeez, I mean, there's, what a there's enough of a there. what can't put Starfield there. I know <laughs> Starfield would completely overshadow like Starfield, Starfield versus would Final do, Fantasy sixteen. Starfield Final would Fantasy eat Final sixteen Fantasy would be breakfast. so overshadowed <laughs> it wouldn't even be funny. 
Yeah. It wouldn't even be funny. It would be basically uh, an Elden Ring uh, Horizon situation. I don't know Starfield's about that, man. Final Fantasy is an uh, established uh, brand. Normies have heard of huge. Starfield. It, sure, it's an established band, but do you guys remember how many copies? Remember, Square Enix complained about how many copies Final Fantasy Remake sold. And I, I, like, I think Remake is probably was more anticipated than Final Fantasy 16. So yeah. I would imagine between... Because I don't think Final Fantasy 16 is coming out on PC. Uh, I think it's just PlayStation only. So you're talking about a game that's in Game Pass on console, on Game Pass on PC, and on Steam... And whatever other streaming devices they'd be able to, like, come on, come on now, come on. But well, so I, I don't know, man. I mean, I, I mean, maybe they will launch Starfield in June, like but a, so, mo- a so month your, after. Your Redfall, guys' but... thoughts are basically that they're releasing since they might, or like you're saying, they are releasing Redfall in May. That it's stupid for them to release. I, it in I wouldn't June, say it's stupid. Starfield I just think it's. June. I don't think it's it's stupid. I think it's. I think that could release Starfield in June and it, it'd be fine. But I think like you give yourself a good reason to delay it in that point. Like if you if you just release Redfall and Redfall's actually good, you've got your Game Pass game for that sort of quarter, right? You could delay Starfield a what little about bit. The Game Pass game for January, February, March, sir. <laughs> smart, <laughs> smart, smart rise. Smart rise. Well, what more do you need? That's- Oh, please. Yeah. A two, what is that? A two year old Switch port at that point? Dude, Monster Hunter Rise is sick, man. Don't even. Don't hey, even they, but they said it was from their own first parties that they were aiming for every quarter, not yeah. third party. We, we still, we're still not there yet. We're still not there yet. We still, okay, fair enough. We're still not quite there yet, but for next yeah, Jeff, year. I'm here. See, but the problem for next year. So here's, here's the problem, right? Is if you're slipping these games. Why did you make the promise this past year that these games would come out? You, like you said, you didn't have to do it. You didn't have to come out at E3 and be like, all these games will be out in the next 12 months, but then have run a disclaimer being like, some of these games might not be, because you know delays happen. So why co- put yourself in a corner <laughs> some- by saying all these things will be coming out by June of next year when you know... A bunch of third-party ones won't, which is totally fine because you can't control those. But you say, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you do yeah. this to yourself at this point by by saying that. You could. Mm-hmm. That's why people didn't like the whole 12 month thing because it's like games get moved all the time. And now we're talking about Redfall moving from March or April to May, which might protect, potentially impact Starfield. Which then, if that Starfield gets further pushed back into the year, because if you're delaying Star, if you're delaying Starfield past June, fuck it, you might as well delay it to the end of the year to get eyes ball, many, many eyes balls on it. Which means if you're doing that, eyes balls. you're not released really, <laughs> as many people looking at it. You might as well eyes delay ball. Avowed a, a, another year so it's further away from Starfield, and you're you not you shouldn't release Hellblade around. Like it's kind of I don't know screws up. Everything else. See, I was going for like more. Okay, go, go, like, what maybe, are you going for? What's my, your what's your time? Maybe, maybe, maybe this was my maybe this is my you know my my ex bot in me. You know, I heard I hear people say that uh, Ran was you know Ran Ran doesn't want to label himself a fan. I don't know how many times I've said I'm a fanboy. Like Xbox is the console and the company I care about. I may mean, have a million gamer score for Christ's sake. So like, of course, I I just don't need to tear down PlayStation to make Xbox you know look better. Right, yeah. so my my whole thing was like, all right, Redfall can come out in May. You have a bunch of third party. Like I always kind of looked at it like, man, it's get like the dates are getting stacked. February from Hogwarts Legacy to like Atomic Heart, like all these games to like Star Wars Jedi Survivor and Woe Long. I was like, I was looking at the release dates and I'm like, yo, there's not a lot of open release dates for Redfall to come out. Mm. Let alone even Starfield, because you look at like May. May has Legend of Zelda. Yeah. May has yeah. Suicide Squad. They're like, yo, maybe you could release it before then. But Xbox also has to think about being a good partner, right? Because mm-hmm. they make money right. off all these game releasing. So you don't want to piss off Warner Brothers and you don't want to piss off EA. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was like, okay, if you get Redfall to come out in May, you know, and it's like Starfield can easily be June. Forza could be, you know, something like April. Like, it really doesn't look like there's anything coming out in April at this point. Minecraft Legends, who knows and who really cares, right? It's going to come out, whatever. It's 20 bucks. It's on everything. Um, you know, Ghostwire Tokyo will be the end of March. It'll be the one-year anniversary whenever yep. that game comes out. Yeah, loop situation. Um, right. And then, like, okay. Um, you know, the end of the year could be, all right, you know, you could have a Project Belfry, 
You could have the rumored Hi-Fi Rush from Tango Gameworks. I don't know if you guys have heard about that. Um, nope. I have not. I have not. Oh, Jeff, 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 you, you didn't hear about no. this? So, a few... No, I think... We, Jeff, did we not talk about this? No, nah, this is the random no. This, so, this is your thoughts. <laughs> on, on, on gaming uh, leaks and rumors, mm-hmm. uh, somebody had posted some screenshots of, of, like, of a game... You know, and it was like, oh, th- and, and someone said, like, oh, this is Hi Fi Rush. This is Tango Gameworks next game. Uh, Hi Fi Rush? People, Hi-Fi yeah, Hi-Fi and, Rush. and it's true. Like, Bethesda has trademarked Hi Fi Rush a couple years Ooh. ago. Mm-hmm. Right? And, mm-hmm. um, and it was, and like, the guy who leaked it says, oh, it's, you know, yes, it's, it's Tango Gameworks next game. It's currently scheduled to release fall of 2023. And people are like, oh, okay, cool. Like, we already know that Tango Gameworks is making a whole bunch of different games. They've said it, right? They've said it in that video in 2021 that they're also making something that is completely different than their horror stuff. And the guy said, Hi-Fi Rush is a rhythm brawler that has the art style of Just Set Radio Future. Ooh, right? that is going to go crazy. So, okay, that's cool, right? And mm. then over... And this will tie into what I was going to ask you next, Cock, because I, I mm-hmm. actually thought you were going to lead with this, but you didn't. Let's go. Let's go. Was um, the Xbox Showcase? Yes. That is rumored for early next year, right? Mm-hmm. The the one and only Grubster, the Jeffrey Grub Grub. Yeah. yeah. The man, the myth, the legend. Went on, a, went on a little known podcast called Xbox Air with a, <laughs> whatever some Australian host, some dude oh, named oh, Special Nick or whatever. Special. I don't know, whatever. <laughs> Whatever. Shout out. Out to special Nick, shout some, out some dude, oh, some no. dude, special Nick, whatever. Um, <laughs> wow, that's they mean. were talking to him. By the way, love you, love you, special Nick. Uh, <laughs> and Jeff Grubb said live on the show that not only is the uh, Xbox showcase indeed real, which mm. you know we had been hearing lots of rumors about, oh, uh, yeah. Jez and myself. But that also, uh, there was going to be a real a reveal of a new game from Xbox, and uh, it eventually came out that he, you know, I, I don't know if he said this or for, but it was confirmed. But yes, Jeff Grub Grub is basically saying that Tango GameWorks next game is going to be revealed at this showcase, but it's a Pentiment level type of a game, Pentiment level experience. Uh, gotcha. Um, mm-hmm from them because they got multiple mm-hmm. projects in the works mm-hmm. um and though that ties back into the you know that that reddit leak or whatever about it being hi-fi rush and you know like okay so you know because in my perfect in my mind i was like all right it's got this year's got to go right for xbox right you, we talked about how game pass is going to blow up you got all these games coming in my mind like red fee redfall and starfield are coming before june you can have it may and you can have it june the only way maybe you don't have Starfield release in June is if the ABK deal's done Ooh. and you're like the Apple of Four's day one. And, and and then maybe you sit down with the people at ABK and you convince them to the, the delay the Diablo until September. <laughs> because if no, because, no, <laughs> no, saying, no, 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 we don't, we don't put that you. evil out there, man. There is no, there's no way, you. there's no way, mm-hmm. there's no way in hell that's gonna happen. I would agree with Diablo you. Diablo is ready. Uh, it, you're much. not like if, if the ABK deal goes through mm-hmm. before June, right? Okay. And you have Redfall in May, and then boom, Diablo 4 is a day one Game Pass title. Dude, Game Pass mm-hmm. is not that important. Boom. <laughs> what? Uh, when it comes to Diablo, Game Pass is not that important. Do you realize how much money Diablo is going to make at retail? It's going to it's going to crap all over Game Pass. We don't delay Diablo for no, Game Pass. You, 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 didn't, you, didn't to to say. you didn't listen what I was going to say. I was saying if it doesn't matter. Diablo Four <laughs> is your game, you're being mean to Diablo. <laughs> well, yeah, because I can be. Uh, and you know, I was all yeah. I was saying was that if, if the way, only way Starfield getting delayed to the end of the year uh-huh. makes sense to me outside of it just not being ready. Like, mm-hmm. okay, it's not ready. We need to delay it. Mm-hmm. Um, even though in the in the pre, pre uh, the E3 pre-press release, like Todd Howard literally said, we're putting the final touches on the game. This was back in June, right? Mm-hmm. So I sort of feel, okay, it's going to come out in June. Plus, it's also yeah. the end of the fiscal year for Xbox. Yes. And I think they really want Starfield out to hit some of those subscriber numbers. Sorry. Mm-hmm. But if you have Diablo and the right. ABK deal's done and that's day one in Game Pass, 
Mm-hmm. Then by all means, you can delay Starfield then. You no. can, you, because you don't, because I do not think you want Starfield and Diablo literally releasing two weeks apart, which is exactly probably what would happen if that's the case. Oh, mm. Thoughts, I think you, well, I think you delay, what? I think you delay Starfield to September. Why, why are we, I mean, there's this general assumption that Starfield must be at the last minute within that 12 month window. What if Starfield's target in April? What if Starfield's target in March? Do we also Starfield before Redfall? I mean, what if that's the big thing they're going to announce at this show? Is Starfield's yeah, launch so, day? So, Cog, so up, shift into go. that. Let's go. Talk to me about the showcase. Do you believe it's happening? What do you want to see from Xbox at this rumored showcase? So it better happen. <laughs> this showcase <laughs> better be better real. Better is that okay. if, if this showcase happen. isn't real, it's it's like it's like those old like PlayStation showcase hopium cycles where like they're they're so starving for news they they invent a showcase. This showcase <laughs> better be real. <laughs> it better be real, and let me tell you why. Because uh, shout out to good friend it was Eric Greenberg. You know, look, they 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 sense the temperature in the room was bad after the no show at the Game Awards, and for them to, for marketing to come out and make a statement that quickly, like, "Hey guys, just to let you know, <laughs> we got something going on. Don't you worry. Very soon, right? That's the energy. So if you're putting that energy out, you kind of knew coming in. This is where I, Jazz, I got to give you 100 percent credit. Like, I didn't want to believe that they were not going to have a presence. I remember Maddie came to me with the news that, you know, you had said that you had heard that they were not going to have a presence at Game Awards. I'm like, there's no way. There's no way they're not going to do that. They get it. They understand that the base needs news. And then Jazz, once again, I felt right. I felt really bad about this because I walked it back because I was like, man, I don't want to be blamed for this. So I was like, I was like, no, nah, I was just speculating, but no, nah, I did, I did. You walked it back because <laughs> how, not because it blew up on the podcast, because Sloth tweeted it out. Yeah, Sloth, yeah. Sloth tweeted it out. And then it, it blew up on Sloth's blew up. tweet. So you were just like, man, it wasn't even like, it was just a rumor I heard. I don't even know if it's really true. Yeah. And then like closer and closer to the day, you're like, yo, I don't think Xbox is going to be there. I think, I think yeah. what I heard was I true. Kinda, I kind of yeah, did yeah, know it was true, but I just, I was just not in a frame of mind to be, to be blamed for that at the time. But, um, Bro, but, it uh, was bad. Was but yeah, I, I mean, it's like you say though, like Aaron Greenberg came out right after and he was like, yeah, we got a show, we got a show. And then I stayed out here and stuff. And so, so what, so wait, what, can we continue? I interrupted you. Yeah. No, no, you're good. You're good. So basically, you know, once that was established and, and that reality was established and now we're like, okay, they, they do a little damage control here because they know there was a disappointment and they do have something to show. I just would have wished... I guess you can't because you don't want to diminish Jeff's show and say, hey, guys, we're not going to be there, but we're doing our own thing. I guess I understand it, but I'm still not happy you know, with the decision. <laughs> I, I, I thought that, too. But you know what? When they revealed Perfect Dark, they also literally said, oh, you know, we don't really have much to show this year. Right. And That's then why- they literally mm-hmm. revealed, like, Flight Sim for the console and yes. Perfect Dark. And it was just like, yes. oh, okay, Aaron. Like, yeah, you yeah. joker, you, you know? It's like they set expectations because they want us to get too crazy, but they still ended up doing something. And yeah. that's what I was holding on to. Yeah, that's a great point, Rand, with the Perfect Dark situation. Because remember, we came in with low expectation. Oh, they're not going to be there. They've already said it. But they did the opposite. So now we come into this situation. We know about a showcase now. Look, they, they, the pressure's on. They've got to get everybody ramped back up again. They have to show people what they work on. The prevalent thought right now, and this is for people, listen, on, LA, on Last Stand Media, you know, look, we got to be honest, Sacred Symbols and those guys, that dominant PlayStation podcast, and the majority of those users are PlayStation users, but they come to Define and Do because they're like, hey, we listen to you guys, we get excited about the Xbox ecosystem. So I speak to them. I go, hey, what is it that makes you excited about Xbox now? And a lot of it is the game studios. A lot of it is Bethesda. A lot of it is these IPs that, you know, could could come out, these new IPs that come out under the Xbox brand. And now I'm looking into it, and now it's like, okay, what is going to get them high? we got to give the updates on Starfield, right? I have people come up to me all the time. When is that coming? That's the game, you know, that I'll get a Series S for or whatever, right? you got to give them the updates, the release dates on these games for 2023. you got to set the tone. You also have to get bring the wonder back. You have to get people excited, Rand, about what future projects are coming. So if there's a new IP, like you're talking about, was it a Hi-Fi Rush, right? 
if there's also I'm also thinking about what's up with Zenimax Online Studios, right? Isn't they working on like a a new IP? A new IP. They've been working on it for like four years or something. Yeah, four years. This seems to be around the time we should get maybe some idea of what that is. You know, we we do know about Kojima's ambitious project, so to speak, about how he tries to utilize the cloud. You got to start building up this year, and you got to start building up the wonder of the future of Xbox Game Studios to say people, hey. This is not the time. And this is why I'm going to come from Jez a little bit, because I know Jez has been a little down on Xbox right now. <laughs> but this is not the time to jump ship, because Ooh. we've got great things coming. This is what's coming. That's what's coming. And you start ingraining that into the base, and I think they will be okay. You know what I mean? They, they, they ended a year terribly. We're not going to deny that. But if you build it back up and you do it, and I don't want... Too many personalities, you know. Say, I don't want, I don't want it to be like, I don't want it to be like a a, a Twitch in the. Don't you know, want it show, to be inside Xbox yeah. Two, essentially. No, 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 not like show the games. Yes, you can have the developer come out, Speak talk to me. about it Speak afterwards. To me. Yeah, talk, show the games, nice trailer, okay. minimal personalities, and also for the game's first party this year, if you can lock in some release dates, that would be greatly appreciated. <laughs> Let's lock greatly appreciated. That, that would be <laughs> greatly appreciated. Like, lock some stuff in, set the expectation, and now you start getting the positive vibes up. And then the last point I'll say is that, look, I do think, this is what I do think about, the, I know you mentioned the ABK deal, and... Look, I don't want to get into the whole the legality of it. The FTC you don't style. love the ABK deal. You don't like you don't uh, like hearing about it every single week. You know, uh, is that something that doesn't it started, uh, interest you anymore? It started off fun. It's we started to get a little dirt behind the scenes. Yes, the initial part of it was fun. There's basically console warring in the boardroom in the, in the courtroom, uh, yeah. which is kind of <laughs> hilarious, right? But now, and this is where I really align with Jez is that you know, and I got in trouble for saying this on other platforms, but it's like. I'm a, I'm a very simple person when it comes to right and wrong. And I try to hear the other side of the argument, even if I don't agree. I literally don't understand why this is not happening. And to me, when politics get into gaming, that's when I start to tune out. So hopefully, <laughs> like, you know, with, with Ms. Khan and their reasonings, I don't get that. My whole thing is... Is this going to um, hurt competition? No. Xbox, to me, in my opinion, is the third place brand. Two, they're offering it to consumers in a way that has never been seen before went through a Game Pass service, as well as offering it to a base like Nintendo and Valve, who never really seen the Call of Duty franchise, which means more people are going to play it. Sony's not going to lose it. So in my, th- in my mind, it's a no brand. I've had this conversation with Hulk before, right? And to me, it's just dealing with people politically grandstanding to make an example out of someone and that's fine i understand that that i'm not going to say that this deal is not complex it's not huge and it doesn't deserve scrutiny and looking into on a deeper level i'm never going to say that that shouldn't happen but in my opinion when you look at consumer and the point and this is the point me and just realign with why is no one talking about the workers at activision blizzard Mm. the conditions how terrible Mm. it is right the decline of a company that's been forced to kind of pump out call of duties and and, and just the the culture we saw the stories the rooms the thing with robert and the team over there like we got to be honest the conditions are bad we're talking about unionization all these things that are good for the greater good of gaming and sustaining people from an employee standpoint, but that's not going to be mentioned. And don't get me started. But anyway, let, 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 the long and short of it is, if the deal goes through, that would be a huge shot in the arm. I think that if it was able to get, you know, concessions and all the stuff starts to happen, if they, they somehow get it in turn by Diablo time, great. But I do think that if they if it gets done, Call of Duty does play a major part for them. With, with Game Pass. And I will say, like, if you could if you could imagine a scenario where like the end of the year, and let's say Starfield does or does not get delayed, but let's just say it does not and it, it it falls in a six month. If you could imagine a scenario where you can put a Call of Duty in Game Pass for the fall of twenty twenty three, oh as much as I don't care about Call of Duty that is a major shot in the arm. Uh-huh. That is massive. 
because now you have the brand association and the marketing. And I think that's what, to be honest, I think, I think Xbox did expect this to go through. And, and, and part of me is like, they probably surprised that they're in a state that they are right now, because I think going back to the game awards, if you paint the scenario where let's, let's go alternate multiverse. The, the deal goes through before the game awards, right? That week. Like, I think that was the week where seventy dollars games got announced, <laughs> and then, oh, what you call it? Uh, the deal gets blocked. But let's just say the deal went through. Now, Xbox and the team shows up at the game awards when Crash Bandicoot comes on site stage. Xbox fans go, "Wait a minute! Oh, that's coming to Game Pass. That's because the deal's done, right?" Yeah. When Diablo comes off on stage, oh, that's coming to Game Pass because the deal's done, mm-hmm. right? So the mentality shifted. So there's a part of me that they, they weren't expecting because they did everything, quote unquote, they were supposed to do to try to show regulators, hey, we're going to treat this like Minecraft. We're not taking it from anyone, right? We're going to put it on all, and we're going to put it on platforms that it never existed. I think it did throw them off. I'm going to be honest. Definitely. I think it really did. And and, and now if, if because I, I, let's be, I personally, again, I'm not a look, legal person but i personally feel the ftc's argument is very weak and if they're able to combat that because right now you saw the statements from activision you saw the statements from microsoft oh they said it's unconstitutional they're ready to take it there brad smith and the team they are ready to go there so if they're ready to go there and now this puts the ftc back maybe we get to a point of concession and maybe it does still go through right so we'll see but if it does go through i will say this rent like if you could imagine a world where Call of Duty is in Game Pass at the end of the year, that's a game changer. So we just got to see how this thing plays out. I think there's a lot of things still in flux. There is a lot of things in flux. And I think you're completely, you know, I agree with you when you say that when it gets political, it's just, it just gets to the point of tuning now. Because like these, these people, these politicians, they, they clearly just don't get it. They don't get technology. They don't get any of this stuff. And I kind of saw this coming. I, I'm sure yeah. I wrote an editorial last year where where I, I actually predicted this might happen. Purely on the basis of, I've seen how this current generation of the FTC has been looking at other tech deals. The fact that they like, um, they they prevented Facebook, Meta, uh, mm-hmm. your, your your company. Um, they, for, I, they prevented I, I your, you. Yeah, you are the CEO of Meta. They prevented your <laughs> company Cog from buying a small VR sports game, which I just, yeah, I, I don't, I don't even know what it is. And that's the point. I don't know what it is. I don't care what it is. And the FTC still blocked it. To me, that's just pure insanity. Now I'm not someone who likes Facebook as Cogneo will <laughs> fully know as well, but I still think like it's ridiculous that you, you would stop Facebook from, from buying this company because they're the only ones really trying to invest in VR right now. Like who the hell is going to stand up and, and, and tell Facebook they can't buy a VR company when literally no one else is invested in that space. And the same kind of thing, same kind of thing with Microsoft here. It's like Microsoft's the only one who's really seriously investing in subscription based game services they're the only ones seriously invested in cloud except for nvidia and it's it's kind of like well compete with nvidia is like uh, you know it's it's completely different because they they don't have to pay for any of the graphics chips you know so it's like they're they're already got a massive advantage there but like sony hasn't shown any willingness to invest in this space so like it's kind of like it, this is just hurting innovation. It's hurting Facebook from innovating in VR, and it's got hurting Microsoft from innovating in cloud services and, and subscription services for consumers. It's stopping consumers getting more cool stuff because the FTC is so utterly blinded by this meme that they've created themselves that big tech bad. That the whole meme is big tech bad, and there's like that they they're sort of bludgeoning the whole industry and painting the whole industry with the same brush because they're utterly ignorant and hideously incompetent, you know. And um, it's 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 like a projection. It's a big cope because they allowed Google to become the sole search engine, which is bad. You can argue right. that Google being the sole arbiter of the entire web is a bad thing. You could argue that point. You could argue the point that Facebook having control of pretty much all internet communication is potentially bad. And we've seen like 
Facebook had to pay $700 million over the Cambridge Analytica data leak um, just today, I think that went through. Mm -hmm. So you could, you could argue that Facebook having sole control of that is potentially bad. But this is so different. This is so different. Like, you know, VR is so small. And like this, the, I just think I just keep thinking about the the guys who built up that VR company. They spent their blood, sweat, and tears, and the only company they can really sell to is Facebook. That's their only right. exit, really. Their only exit strategy is Facebook. And the FTC has just sat up and said, "No, sorry, you can't sell the company that you own, that you created." In our, we literally live in a capitalist system, a capitalist democracy, and the government is telling. An individual, a free individual, they can't sell their company. This is mm. insane. And and mm. the same thing's happening on a bigger scale with Activision Blizzard. All these investors, they own Activision Blizzard. They own it. They're shareholders and they own it. And they voted overwhelmingly. I think it was like 92, 90, between 92 and 96 percent. I can't remember the exact number, but it was in the 90s. 90% 90 of owners of Activision Blizzard voted to sell. They voted to sell their company. And the government is telling them we can't, even though it won't hurt competition, demonstrably, it won't hurt competition. And the, the government's telling them they can't do it. And th this is what happens when it doesn't matter whether you're on the right or the left and all that, th that fake mm -hmm. bullshit. When government gets involved in tech, they all they do is just trip over their ignorance repeatedly. It doesn't matter if they're right, doesn't matter if they're left. They just don't get it. For some reason, politicians and tech just don't mix. I don't know what it is. It's like they're allergic to it. And it's it's so frustrating. And I'd honestly, I'd have the same, I'd have the same arguments if it was Sony trying to buy Activision. I agree. I'd same have the same thing. if it was Nintendo. If Sony was trying to buy Square Enix, I've said I've I've been on the record of saying Sony should buy Square Enix. I think Sony would be a better company to run Square Enix than Square Enix. You know, I think mm -hmm. Sony would take care of those IPs far better than Square Enix does. That Square Enix just won an award today for the the worst marketing. Uh, of the year for Babylon's fall, you know, I feel like Sony would have done done a way better job with all this, all this stuff, you know. Yeah, um, no, I agree. I agree. And, um, I, 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 it's just frustrating, like man. It's just no, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. And I, I think for me, and I've said this on ILP a ton of times, you know, I'm I'm of the minds. I've never had a problem with exclusives. Like to me, exclusives always gave me the identity of the console or the platform, right? And I also don't have a problem with developing a nascent market. So it's like if you trailblaze and you create, let's be honest, like this, the game subscription service, right? And, and, and Microsoft has reinvented themselves in that, in that regard. And you have this service and, and you're willing to still allow, you know, the game that is the game changer, so to speak, the outlier, which is Call of Duty, right? And you, again, Jez, you were on fire with that because I even thought that Microsoft should be allowed to, to do what they want with that, right? But you always, <laughs> you always keep like, you were like, oh, that's a game changer. That's a, that's a legacy title. That's a, that's a bigger thing. And for them ritual. to capitulate, it's a ritual. That was your words. Yes. It, 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 for, for them to capitulate and say, no, we will definitely not take this from, if even if it means 10 years, even if it, so to speak, in perpetuity, right? You you still allowing this thing to stay everywhere for the most part, and you know for that not to happen, and and, and the, the problem that bothers me personally is that they are not the market leader in gaming, right? No. So what are we doing? Are we what? What's the message we're sending? We're we're protecting. We don't want competition. We want it to stay status quo and whoever is number one and two remain number one and two. And then the other thing that bothered me and last thing I'll say on it is that, you know, when you look, I read their reasoning to why they blocked it and it came down to the Zenimax deal. And where even where the EU had to step up and say, no, Microsoft did not promise or do any lie or do anything illegal or dishonest with that, that whole situation they basically said hey legacy titles will remain where they are like the elder scrolls online things of that nature you know and places where game pass exists and other games new ips in a on a case-by-case -case basis so if it was already agreed upon and this is the reasoning that you're blocking a deal to me to your point jazz this shows a lack of understanding of the video game market we've heard that phil and the team had to go over there and bring the consoles to switch 
you know, the other to show these regulators how gaming works currently in this generation. And that's the frustration. So, yeah, I'm hoping that they do get it. I mean, who knows? It may go all the way up to the Supreme Court. This thing could still be going on. Who knows? But that that's the hope is that, you know, common sense and logic kind of dictate because I'm with you. I don't care who it is if it it just happens that it's microsoft in this situation i would be fighting the same way you know for you know any other company that was trying to do that because it just makes sense more as a consumer i'm a consumer of games if more people can access this games and nintendo guys and valve guys and more people can access that's ultimately what's better that's what you should be theoretically protecting right so that's where i'm at with it but long short long story short hopefully it gets it gets done, so I don't have to see Rand go on about it and put it in his titles in the video. Well, <laughs> I mean, I don't think you need to be worried about me making videos about it. Like, Destin's been making a video about it every single, you know, like, day this whole month. So yeah, it's given him a ton of off, content. Man. He's just going crazy. Any, any, like, you know, the FTC sneeze, Destin's there to report about it. You know what I mean? <laughs> Which, I mean, if he's not sick and tired of it yet, more power to him. Create all the content you need. Like, Hogue's on top of that stuff, too. Yeah. Yeah. For me, it was just like, I don't know. Like, I, I thought about it, just, I don't know. Like, I loved it when it was, I loved it when the deal was. Like you said, it was Jim Ryan responding in a way we've never seen him respond. Plus, I love the fact that every time Jim Ryan speaks, it's like bullshit coming out of his mouth, right? <laughs> you can smell it. And you know what he's saying is just it's just crap. So, like, when he would respond and was like, this deal's inadequate, you know, like, uh, they weren't even thinking about PlayStation. Like, I was, like, all over that stuff. Because, you know, Jim Ryan doesn't give two flying shits about Xbox fans, considering the type of marketing deals they run, Right considering, uh, you know, all the stuff that they've done. Like, oh, you need to think about PlayStation. Fa-. And then, like, Phil responding. And then, like, the initial responses of how they... It was just like, all right, this is interesting, right? Because it gives you... It was like... It was it was new information. But everything since then has just basically been essentially the same thing. Like, either just more information about the CMA stuff, but stuff we already knew, or just the FT... Like, granted... I will say the FTC, the Activision's response to the FTC mm. was spicy. It was like, gorgeous. <laughs> I love it. It was it was amazing. And I, I did think about making a video about that. And maybe I still will because I you know I'm on break from making content videos and stuff, but the, like I don't know. I, I just I'm just kind of waiting to see how the rest of this all shakes out. Like next yeah. month we will f- maybe find out what the EU and the CMA think. I think their preliminary stuff is happening. So may- maybe it- it's like different things. Cause it was like the CMA. It- I think it all started with the CMA. Cause it was like, they put out, no Brazil came out and Brazil was like, they just torpedoed all of PlayStation's points. Mm-hmm. Right. They were like, our job is to protect consumers, not, not competitors. And they were like, Everything Sony's saying is a bunch of BS. We clear the deal with no restrictions, right? And then, every, you know, everybody's feeling good. And then the CMA happened. And the CMA literally, every single one of their talking points about why it was going to phase two was basically like bullet point for bullet point, uh, exactly what PlayStation had said to the Brazilian regulators. And we were all sitting there like scratching our heads like, what? How could this be? How, I was like, not scratching my head. It's Britain. Yeah. The it's government Britain. Is sure. Un- yeah. Right. And it was just like, what is going on? Like, you know, and the FTC, it's like you look at the FTC and they're just basically trying to make a political stand. They're just saying big tech bad, right? Like, we're just going to try to wait you out. We're not even going to try to, we're not, e- we don't even believe in this case strongly enough to, t- to take you to federal court. We're just literally going to, uh, you know, take you to our own court, but we're going to make sure that. When we do, it's past the time where the deal expires. So either, um, you know, like shareholders of Activision Blizzard would have to like vote for an extension, right? So they're just they're just trying to wait people out to make sure the mergers fall. And it was like, all oh, this info, oh, this isn't exciting. But then my boy, my guy, Jim Ryan spoke up again this week, Cog. Yeah, you know, and <laughs> once again, the stuff that comes out of his mouth. Pure, we, we don't call him lying Jim Ryan for nothing. Oh. There's a reason, you know, from we believe in generations 
to essentially now uh, Game Pass is in competition. I don't even, we don't even think are, about are you guys. implying that these are differing statements that he made to regulators? Yeah. It's almost mm-hmm. like when you read the regulator stuff, they're just like, oh, Game Pass, Jim Ryan, oh, we can't compete with, oh, my God, we can't do it. Oh, what are we supposed <laughs> to do? Game Pass is just, that voice, <laughs> just. Oh, Game Pass is just so much bigger than us. It would take years to invest. We just can't do it. And then if they get Call of Duty, we're doomed. You can't you to save the gaming industry. You have to block this deal, right? Is is what they said, and then like private, uh, you know, all hand teams meeting with PlayStation. He's just basically fuck Xbox. <laughs> they ain't fucking nothing. We we're selling all this shit. You know how many PlayStations we've sold? Yeah, double what Xbox Game Pass subscribers last five years. That's how we do. That's how PlayStation does. They ain't nothing to us. And you're like, wait. Is that the opposite of what you've been saying to regulators? And Jim's like, any recording devices going on? Oh, <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, seriously, right? I mean, <laughs> what, what, I'm, 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 sorry, I'm like Jim Ryan's, Jim Ryan's like, he's, I, I he to, needs to open up his m- mouth more because it is just, I love amazing. it when he does. Cause it's something, some lie comes out of his mouth. Some, some crap he's spewing all over the place. Mm-hmm. And you know what? No, I'm talking about it. I feel I'm going to make a video about this tomorrow. Screw it. I'm yeah, going to title it do like it. the thumbnail is going to have Jim Ryan's face and it's going to have a Pinocchio nose coming Ooh. out. I'll build oh, that. I love it. And then, and then on the right hand <laughs> side, I'll, 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 I'll have more PlayStation lies, exclamation point, question mark. And the title oh, of the video will be it. something like uh, PlayStation continues to lie about Xbox Activist or, or something. I haven't really thought too much about it. But you know what? Mm-hmm. I wasn't going to make any new videos until the new year. I, you know what? I'm going to come. I, I, feel like, I feel like talking about Jim Ryan. And I don't know if the chat feels like me talking about Jim Ryan. But oh, seriously. I do it. I mean, do come it, on. I, I mean, they, Jim anymore. literally cried. PlayStation literally cried to regulators about Game Pass and Call of Duty. And how it's just not fair. All this stuff. And like... And then privately, he's just like, Xbox ain't shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's, they're it's not competition. There's, there's even, a... though all, even though all of his actions, all of his actions, like literally redoing PlayStation Plus to make it more like Game Pass and having clauses in their marketing agreements to exclude right. games from Game Pass. Like, listen, talk is cheap. Mm. Talk is really cheap. It's the actions that matter. And you know what your actions tell me? What your company's been doing from, from you know, like say, talking to the regulators and then all the things you do publicly with your deals and all that stuff? You're, you fear Game Pass. You really, really do. So you, can, you can downplay it all you want to your... I mean, I guess, you, I guess the, the thing is know your audience. Know who you're speaking to. So Jim Ryan's speaking to regulators. He's saying one thing, and then Jim Ryan's speaking to the PlayStation employees or just an extension of PlayStation Nation. He's probably speaking to them the way he would speak to the PlayStation Nation on Twitter. We're the best. We're the biggest. Uh, Nobody else even matters. Uh, Nobody can compete with us. We're PlayStation, right? (laughs) I mean, am am I the only... Cog, what do you think about all that? Look, their their whole business model, I'll say model, but like the practices they've used to establish themselves as one of the dominant forces in gaming has been about locking content to their platform. That's just a fact. Like it's just, we, we can't dance around that. Right. So from an exclusivity standpoint, you know, we've seen that brand association and to their credit, you know, they won the generation that they were supposed to Xbox lost a generation that they weren't supposed to, so to speak, they were coming off the, the high of the Xbox 360, you know, a lot of third parties and everyone kind of positioned Microsoft as the, might be the de facto leader coming into the Xbox one generation and align themselves accordingly. And then we saw the debacle <laughs> that was TV TV. And I think we, we all kind of deemed it as probably one of the worst years in Xbox history, the, 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 the messaging was terrible, the DRM situation, this is how you trade games, you know, people were like, hey, is this a games 
device or is this a television? Remember, they were like signing. It was the, the TV show. I mean, was it Quantum Breaks had a TV show aligning with it? So it was just all this messaging that just went wrong. And then PlayStation had a very aggressive approach. They capitalized it. You know, me and King remember it like it was yesterday. Um, generally at that time, they they usually Microsoft would do their press conference first, and then because of Japanese time, I believe, uh, which called Sony would go after. They delayed the Sony conference, and now as the stories have come out, it was because they wanted to remove DRM. Once they show, saw the negative reaction to the connect and the DRM and the messaging, they removed their DM. They they made their camera not bundled with it, right? And then announced the PlayStation at a price point that was cheaper, and it ended up being a more powerful device. And they, you know the rest was history. We, it was just it was a slam dunk expert strategy, right? And I don't knock them for that. And I don't knock them when they make these deals that kind of make games exclusive to their platform. The thing, the pro problem I have is that when it comes to ownership, if I buy a company, right? And this is, this is the, I guess the, where I differ from a lot of people, because they call me Lord Acquisition. And like, God, why do you like acquisitions? Consolidation is bad for the industry. And I get it. I'm not going to sit there and say there's, there's not some concerns, but my issue is what's the alternative? No one's giving me an alternative if these companies go out of business. I've, I'm an older gamer. I've been around the midways, the acclaims. They don't exist anymore. So to Jez's point, if someone, you know, is, is, is saying, hey, we're looking to be acquired because, I mean, this was ZeniMax's situation, right? This was, they, like, let's be honest, they, there was a downward trend when Fallout 76 and then, what is it, Wolfenstein started to go co-op, and they, they became the single-player game that was a single-player company that wasn't really being successful as much as they used to, and they started to take risks. They didn't pan out, and then they were in a situation that, hey, they were looking to be acquired, and Microsoft was there. And I don't believe in, in, in preventing people from going out of business, you know what I'm saying, because of some grander purity talk. I don't, I don't believe in that. So basically what I'm saying to all this is that if Sony is allowed to do what they do to maintain their dominance in the market and Xbox has now showed a commitment to gaming, right? Because at one point we weren't sure, but now there's a commitment to game. There's a commitment to studios, to investment, to realizing that you need, you have to have ownership. You can't have the rise in the sunset overdrive situations. If you do that and now there's fruits of that, then they should be allowed to do what they want with those companies. And that that's just where I'm at. With it. It's just as simple as that. And to me, that's the essence of competition, right? That's now going to force someone to say, okay, you know what? We're dominant in the single player cinematic narrative experience. You know what? We have to step up our live service. Let's go acquire Bungie, right? Let's go make multiplayer games. They haven't done anything since that, since like SOCOM. To me, that's what I want. When both of them are competing, we as the consumer win. So that's what this is about to be. So as far as Jim Ryan and, th and those comments, look, he's got to report to his shareholders. He, I know what's going on, right? He's got to do whatever he can because from what we understand, that money from Call of Duty being on that platform is money that they value very much. And it must be extremely very beneficial for them to go to the extent they are to try to block this deal. They want the status quo. They don't want this to change. I get that. As a person who's, you know, you, you, you got to report to your, your shareholders. I understand that. But at the same time, it is contradictory to me to say that's going to be bad for gamers. <laughs> what the reality is, which gamers are you talking about? Are you talking about the entire of gaming or are you talking about PlayStation gamers specifically? <laughs> and that to me like, is where yeah, you get exposed. It's not even bad for PlayStation gamers. Like this argument is the one that really, really annoys me because mm -hmm. like PlayStation gamers, nothing would change for them. Nothing would change. They'd still get to buy Call of Duty at $70 if they want to. Rumor is that Microsoft even offered to put Call of Duty in PlayStation Plus, so it could be even better for them. But let's just assume that that isn't the reality of what, what would happen. For PlayStation gamers, nothing changes. Nothing would right. change. They'd still get Diablo. They'd still get, they'd still get all the games that are already on PlayStation. They'll get Call of Duty forever in perpetuity. Like, maybe they'll lose some, they'll lose some weapon skins. 
for Call of Duty at launch or something like that. You know, all the marketing bullshit that, that Call of Duty yeah. has. Maybe they lose that. That's pretty much all they're losing here. Like the, but there's just so much to gain. If you're a PC gamer, you gain Activision games on Steam. We're currently exclusive to Battle.net. If you're a Nintendo Switch gamer, you get Call of Duty in some form. You know, maybe it's Call of Duty Mobile Port or something. But you get some form of Call of Duty. Don't know exactly what, but you get some. You get some Call of Duty. If you're a Switch gamer, you probably get Diablo Four through the cloud as well, and a bunch of other stuff. You know. Um, and if you're if you're an Xbox gamer or just a general gamer who doesn't mind spending ten pound a month, you also get all those games on cloud for ten pound a month instead of paying seventy dollars a month. So there there is not a universe that exists today where consumers are harmed by this deal. And if you ever did go to federal court, this is something they would just physically would not be able to demonstrate how consumers are going to be harmed by this. There's like it's it hinges on pure ideology pure ideology which is why i'm hopeful that microsoft will take it all the way to court because if it does go to a federal court system it's just going to fall apart like a house of cards you know it's it's it makes me really angry like not not from like a not because i personally give a shit about getting call of duty on, on game pass i don't care like, i'm like cog i don't really care i don't really play call of duty anymore i'm too old mm -hmm. you know i don't really care about that stuff man like i don't i can afford to buy diablo 70 dollars. i don't really care if it's in game, xbox game pass i just bought the statue for 700 dollars for god's sake so i like it it doesn't really affect me but it affects my the childhood me who couldn't afford the seventy dollar game every year? You know? Oh, preach, preach! It, it, it affects, it affect, yeah. It affects, it affects like, it affects like people who who aren't so blessed. You know, maybe they can't mm -hmm. afford Call of Duty every year, or maybe they have to like make a choice between like you know Call of Duty or or eating. You know, mm -hmm. which is what my the, the situation my family was in when I was a little kid. You know, it was really? literally like that. It was like, no, we can't. I can't. I literally remember a conversation. Can't afford to buy a Majora's Mask. It's, it's too expensive it's you can yeah. you, you can have that or dinner you know yeah. and it's it's like but that argument goes out the window when it's an xbox game pass and it's like the ftc won't even hear that as an argument they won't even hear it because they're so ignorant and they're so incompetent they won't even hear it as an argument and it's like when when people people see me on Twitter tweeting about this, there's this whole narrative now that like people are attacking Lena Khan or whatever she, or whatever her name is. Like it's like she's a grown ass woman and she's she's in government. I'm sorry, but if you can't criticize your government, then what can you do? You know, and it's not my government; it's America. But we all live in America, don't we? This is still going to affect me as a Brit. It's going to affect me no matter what country I'm in. America's decisions affect the whole world. So yeah, I am going to comment on it. And while this deal doesn't, it's not going to vastly change my game day to day gaming. The only skin I've got in this race is that Phil Spencer mentioned StarCraft. Like that's that's the yeah. only that's the only hopium that there is if you're a StarCraft fan is that Phil Spencer mentioned StarCraft because Activision doesn't care about RTS because it's not a trend. It's not a trending genre anymore. Microsoft cares about it because they want diversity and their platform portfolio for Xbox Game Pass, as Cogneo said earlier, all about diversity, which is why we've got Age of Empires back. It's why we've got Flight Simulator. So Microsoft cares about those kind of games, where Activision doesn't. So the only skin I've got in this game as a, as a consumer is, this is the only chance for me to get StarCraft back. But even that, it's like, it's not why I get so mad about this deal. It's because of the ignorance, the hypocrisy of Sony, and the just the sort of the the sort of anti competition mentality while claiming this is about promoting competition it just mm. hypocrisy makes me so mad like pathologically so cog i get mm. mad <laughs> no i hear you um, i hear you i'm, I'm and, and uh, you, that's what i say uh, not to interrupt you but the last one i say when you really resonated with me is you know again being an older gamer being a person who you know my family, they, my mom, they, she didn't support games. So additionally, <laughs> so for me, I had to save up my pocket money, right? I had to, yeah. you know, you had to, you had to, okay, boom, you, you're coming around at $50, $60, you finally saved up, and you've got one decision to make. 13-year-old Cog had one decision to make. You go up to that store, 
And man, if you made the wrong game decision as a kid, right, and you're stuck with a bad game, you learn quickly about the economics of gaming, which is when you go trade that in, it's like 15, 20 bucks, you know, you lose the value of the game. And then, you know, it goes right back on itself at a used game market at the GameStop or whatever for like, you know, maybe five dollars off the retail price. Now, could you imagine, I'm just trying to imagine like 13 year old Kong and Game Pass existed. Mm. And it's like that $60 that I saved for that one game, whether it be Revenge of Shinobi or whatever it was, that it was the thing I was looking for. Now I pay 15 or 10 a month and I have a catalog of over 200 games plus games, what have you, back compat, first party releases. As a kid, I would have been in heaven to have a service like that. I wish Game Pass existed. And I think the thing, the problem that gamers have to, the uh, hardcore gamers, I should say, have to disconnect themselves. They, we are the hardcore. But there's a recession going on right now. There are people like Jez is saying, like they're trying to put food on the table. People are unemployed. People are out of work. Like I'm, I have friends that it's like, yo, they're going through a tough time. But it's like, bro, it's on Game Pass. Oh, for, okay, I can play with you. Like, that's what it's about to me. You want more people invested, especially with the conditions financially, how this world is. And the final point, which I already reiterated, which is just about my, I'm always going to be pro developer and, and pro conditions. And when I see people going through rough times and, and not being treated fairly and overworked and, you know, unionization has come up in gaming to me, that's what's important. And, and from what I see, unless there's stuff I don't know about, Microsoft is willing to capitulate to all of this, which is bringing unionization into gaming, better working conditions. You see Zenimax now getting on board with that, you know, and then obviously Activision. So to me, again, I'm trying to be fair and devil's advocate with the FTC, but I just don't understand it when I look at the bigger picture here and why this is being blocked. And that's just where my stance on it. <laughs> look at the conversation we started just for me talking about it. Sorry. I'm just, I'm just, <laughs> yeah, it's a whole it's I just, for me again. Yeah, I just hope it's just done with next year. Like we yeah. it's it's dominated <laughs> the news cycle so <laughs> shut, shut up right. God damn it. Is that I just I just want it to be over with. Like it's dominated the news cycle so much and it's you know, we're meant to be talking about games really, and it's just so dominating. Let me let me ask you this question. I, yeah. I think it I think it did come up in chat and I'm not sure who said it, maybe Replicant, but do you think that the focus of Activision Blizzard has maybe uh, kind of um distracted Xbox leadership mm, from question. doing the things they should be doing? Like are they spending too much time on Activision Blizzard and not enough time, you know, doing other things? Essentially, yeah. I mean, I'll jump in if unless Jeff was going to jump in. Um, I, I do. There is a fear from me, honestly, that because of the weight of this this deal, that everything kind of is in a holding pattern, right? And and it sucks because you felt kind of that was part of what was holding back Xbox in 2022, and the concern is just that you know it's all hands on deck, right? So they truly value it for the mobile market as well. The part that a lot of hardcore games don't want to talk about, but the mobile market is huge for Xbox. This is a huge thing to crack, you know? So in speaking with Hogue and a couple other people and, you know, I even asked, I'm like, okay, in this type of scenario, right? Can Microsoft legitimately go out and buy a publisher <laughs> or another studio while this, you know, vicious court battle is going on, so to speak. And the answer was actually yes. And I was surprised. And, and, and the way, you know, in the conversation I had with Hogue was just that, and we, we talked about it on, on Duke Ultimate, was just kind of like, he said, look, Cog, the difference is the scale, right? Once you talk, what is it, 68 billion, <laughs> right? That's when regulators want to come in and look in. But he had examples that, you know, he kind of showed in the past that, like, you can still do smaller deals during that time. So I'm just curious if, micro, to your question, I'm just curious if Microsoft will still pursue, let's just say, a Sobo's up for grabs. Or, and I, I listened to you guys you know, just recently, 
you know, we have to look at what High on Life is doing with Squanch, right? I mean, this is a major shot in the arm for them. Like, this is something completely unexpected where the reviewers kind of got it wrong and the, the consensus from the public is, no, this is fun. This is Rick and Morty. This is unique. It's a little bit, what, what you call it, Rand, bathroom humor. and You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's this fun new IP that Microsoft may have to look and say, hey, Squanch Games, like, you know, let maybe we 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 develop this relationship a little bit further, right? Let, let, let's take, we love the reception, right? So I do think they'll do stuff. My gut feel, feeling is probably smaller stuff. I doubt it's a publisher until, you know, the, uh, the FTC situation is resolved. But I, I do worry a little bit that the attention is so grand that it does take their eye off the ball or they just can't operate and maybe you know sony comes in and swoops up a, a square enix or something you know what i mean like during this this period of them kind of locked into the legality of of activision blizzard king but i'm curious about jez like what do you what do you think you know do you think that they are locked in do you think that they would be able to kind of move around I actually um i actually have an article that i'm planning at the moment called Xbox Game Pass can't be everything Xbox is. Because increasingly, it does worry me that, like, not just Activision Blizzard deal, of course, which is about Xbox Game Pass at the end of the day, but increasingly, I think, like, you know, we've seen a lack of innovation in the dashboard. You know, we haven't got, you know, we haven't got improvements to the dashboard beyond surfacing more Xbox Game Pass content. Like, the dashboard was recently changed just to promote Xbox Game Pass. They didn't give us anything... Uh, you know, in addition to that, they gave us like the most basic bare bones of a upgrade to the the Clips app. After a year of year or more of complaining that it was broken, they gave us the absolute bare minimum. Everything they're doing right now revolves around Game Pass, and Game Pass is great. You know, don't get me wrong, Game Pass is great, and it gives us like a lot of value. And for people who you know don't want to or can't buy seventy dollar games a pop, it's a really great benefit that all of Xbox's games are there day and day. But again, it's this whole sort of like, that's all, it feels like Game Pass is vacuuming up everything that Xbox is. This FTC deal is dominating everything. Like, are they, could they have bought other smaller studios that would have flown under the radar, you know, to, to the benefit of Xbox Game Pass, rather than fighting for this deal that might not even happen, you know? And Microsoft does say this is about mobile rather than Xbox Game Pass, but a huge part of it is about Game Pass at the end of the day, you know. Um, <laughs> Act Apple Apple has its own, like, Apple Arcade thing, and Microsoft must have must have smelled blood in the water with the European Union forcing Apple to allow side-loading and third-party stores, which is obviously going to be a huge benefit to Xbox Game Pass, for example. Um, but again, it's still, like, it's still irritating that, like, the la all the features, all the features and all the upgrades and all the development and all the budgets just seems to revolve around Xbox Game Pass, you know. Um, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. I just wish they could do both. And it kind of, it kind of does make me think, like, maybe they are sort of, like, um, they are distracted by all this. They are, t the, 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 the eyes are off the ball a little bit. You know, slick back in chat says, Phil says Game Pass isn't everything to Xbox, but it, Xbox is actually to tell a different story. And yeah, I'm starting to agree. You know, like I, I was literally coming to, um, you know, like last year I did a survey, a feedback survey, which I'm going to do again in, in January, which is sort of like, what are your top concerns about Xbox? And looking at the top concerns from last year, none of them were really addressed. You know, they didn't do anything with achievements. They barely did anything with Eclipse. Mm, they mm. barely changed the dashboard. They, they, in some ways, they even made it worse. You know, so it's kind of like... And um, the reason for that is Game Pass. There's no budget for extra engineering because it's all going towards xCloud. There's no budget for achievements because all the engineers are working on xCloud. There's no, there's no like design mentality of making the dashboard cleaner because it needs to be an ad for game pass because that's everything xbox is right now and like you can argue that like that there is obvious benefits to that like um phil spencer's bonuses are tied to xbox game pass numbers and so are satya and the Dellas, all tied to subscribe subscriber numbers but um their, their targets for, for those bonuses are so insane that they'll probably never hit them anyway but it, it's it's still kind of like that's 
all Xbox has become now, and it is a little bit irritating. And you do wonder, is that is I off the ball there? You know, if if they if they were a little bit more focused, could someone have noticed the fact that Halo Infinite didn't have a post launch roadmap? You know, um, could someone have noticed that? Uh, you know any that they didn't have any games ready for this year <laughs> could they have could they have not predicted that starfield might have been delayed out of this year and you know lined Ooh. up a major triple a triple a game pass edition for 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 the fall you know i don't know mm. i don't know but um i think there's definitely there's definitely a possibility there but I don't know if Rand, Rand, do you feel differently? How do you feel about Xbox's focus? Do you think it's too, too zeroed in on Game Pass? Do you think the budgets are too, too skewed towards Game Pass? Or do you think it's Game Pass is so important to the future of Xbox that that's just the way it needs to be? Is Rand there? Uh, well, oh, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I could see Phil being too focused on Activision. But I, I wouldn't think Matt Booty or any of the studios would be because they have their own things to deal with. Like the the focus on Activision Blizzard, would that why would that affect Bethesda and Todd Howard making Starfield, right? Yeah. Like if it would affect anybody, I think it would just affect like Phil potentially. Uh and maybe Brad Smith, which I don't so maybe some of the trick the trickle down effect would be like, well, we need to lie low throughout the year, which you know, they did that for the most part. Very contrary to what Xbox normally does, they were very quiet for most of this year. And, you know, there's been rumors of, hey, why didn't Xbox show up at the Game Awards? And one of the speculation that people throw around is because they wanted to make it seem like they were small or make waves to the regulators. And people have differing opinions about whether that is true or not. Like, some people be like, you know, maybe Xbox thinks like, you know, if we don't say anything, I don't know, it's kind of along the lines of like, maybe they think regulators are dumb, which, you know, some of them are. But I was like, well, what would it matter if Xbox showed a game they already announced? Like, the regulators know it. So, I don't know, maybe there is a sense of like, some of their PR stuff has been slightly muted uh, because of the deal. Uh, but I don't think any, I mean, like, the game stuff, probably not, because, like I mentioned, like, what does Matt Booty have to worry about the ABK deal for, right? Yeah. That wouldn't be his purview. Um, as far as other things, like, hey, the DVR, something that Jason Ronald came <laughs> on your podcast almost literally a year ago, correct? Yes, that is correct. Uh, and said that it was a priority. Am I, am I mistaken on that? That is correct. Well, I mean, there hasn't been a change there. And I also kind of like don't think there ever will be, to be honest with you. Ooh. I don't think I don't really think they can really improve the functionality of the DVR. They might be able to improve the functionality of like how you view them, but I think that DVR is the way I think the way that DVR works is going to be how it always works. I think they're sort of stuck with it, right? Interesting. Um achievements, people have been asking for achievements to change for a long time. I sort of feel like it's one of those decisions that is like, how does changing achievements or making it better make us more money? And it's not something you can really assign a monetary value to. Uh, like maybe, you know, uh, thing other things. Like, you know, getting more people to try to sign up for Xbox Game Pass Ultimate to stream your games and something that could essentially, you know, more people might be able to do uh, uh, in the future, whereas like game achievements are like, ah, we don't really see, feel the need or the people like maybe we can change it later, but right now we really need people on this project and on this project, and there's just nobody left to really improve achievements in any way. Uh, Eliza says, why would they be stuck with the DVR? I don't know. It's just just a thought. Considering the DVR works exactly the same as the DVR in the Xbox One, I think I feel the- like maybe. Some of the drawbacks, some of the problems they had with it on the Xbox One kind of sort of have carried over to the Series X. It's, hype, it's it hypervisor. Was- there, there's, not enough, there's not enough system resources to really take it beyond what it is, probably. And the, mm. the, the thought process is, well, if they are going to add more system resources, devs, that should be for games, really. You know, yeah. So it's kind yeah. of like a cost cost benefit situation, and they they've got stuck they've got stuck in this situation where like the the operating systems on one one piece of the the 
the dashboard's on one piece of the operating system and the games run in a different piece of the operating system. So it's kind of like, you know, they're, they're in this situation where they can't use resources for games in the apps layer. It's, you know, it's it's mm. weird with that stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, it could it's be just, some underlying <laughs> technical thing that's maybe yeah. preventing. Yeah. But I, I'm, I'm with you, though, on, on, on achievements, though, because I feel like they they pioneered the space like they they created that right and then you look at the the platinum trophy and, and stuff equivalent that playstation is doing and to me they've taken it a little bit farther and I, I i would think they would still not give up on that because if game pass is the driver right you want to show completion you want to show people the engagement that is driving and and i think people would I think it would benefit them, honestly. No, to, I mean, to, I've to I've tried to explain that to people yeah. at Xbox. When the, I, I think it would. Like, I think mm-hmm. the career system that they were building, that yeah. just leaked, I yeah. think that would have helped. Because yeah. I, I think it, like, really would entrench people into the ecosystem more where I want to spend my money here because there's this thing. But I also mm-hmm. feel like Xbox wants mm-hmm. to be different. Sure, they pioneered the achievement space. Right, mm-hmm. everybody literally copied them. Everybody from Steam yeah. to PlayStation, like everybody's got achievements. But I sort of feel like they didn't know where to take it next, and they haven't really been any updates to the to achievements since 2016 when they uh, revealed like uh, the percentages yeah. and the like rare achievement. And people have been asking forever, hey. We want a platinum trophy equivalent. We want completed games. And I sort of feel like Xbox wouldn't want to do that because it's be too much like admitting PlayStation did it better or at least improved upon it. So they won't in a similar way about how Xbox might build their showcases, you know, the new showcases. Because everybody just wants them to be like, just copy the Nintendo Direct. Just copy the PlayStation uh, state of plays, but I feel like Xbox is like, if we're gonna do this, we're gonna do it our way, and our <laughs> way is personalities. We oh, want so and so in front of the mic interviewing this person because we don't want to be seen like we're copying somebody else, right? Uh, that's what I personally feel. Um, I hopefully they don't do it, uh, but yeah. Like a lot, like especially with the dashboard, like they have this new dashboard they're building, which I have, and it's really realistically no different than the dashboard you currently have right now, right? They just shrunk the tiles, they moved the tiles down a little bit, right? Uh, they put the store my games and apps as a small thing on the bottom left. They brought a settings icon and a search icon to the top right. Otherwise, it looks exactly the same. You still can't see your dashboard. It's still just kind of squares in your face. The things that they've done, though, is when you scroll down, like currently right now, uh, at least before on the old dashboard, you'd have your pins. So you can pin all your games or your groups that you've had. Now, the first thing down is something that Microsoft gives you, whether it's the top free-to-play games or the brand new... Uh, game pass releases and then one down from that is finally your pins so microsoft with that microsoft to me that's that's basically saying there's a mandate from the top maybe not phil Mm -hmm. but someone close to phil that they need more discoverability for certain things on the dashboard and the fact that they literally have at least one line of things that x like that is not your content on your dashboard strikes me as just somebody being like look we need more people discovering stuff in game pass signing up and all that stuff which is on considering this is the company that literally is like express yourself <laughs> express yourself look at all these controllers we have with all the different colors look at the um xbox design lab and you can have a million different combinations mm-hmm. express yourself mm-hmm. right and when it comes to the dashboard, it's this rigid, one-way, their-way thing where you can't really express yourself because you can't see anything behind the giant tiles. So the way people who could express themselves are by, you know, their, 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 their background art. And Microsoft is very much like, no, you can't. And 
everything has to be this way. So yeah, I, it's, it's the internal, it's the internal, you know, at companies and uh, corporations, it's the internal struggle between the creatives, marketing, and the finance people. Right? And, and, and sadly, you know, these are, you know, now that I'm privy to some, you know, these are the discussions that I had. And some some battles are lost to the overall bottom line. I'm not saying this is definitively the case here, but I understand your point, you know, because I, I do agree, like, the achievement system and, and the dashboard and DVR things are things that are sorely needed, sorely needed from a gaming perspective to improve the platform. And I think we'll have a long tail for them. But clearly there are some decisions that are being or being won out by other groups. And I yeah. think, yeah, that's t- that. I'll, I'll, I'll let you go, Jess. But I think that may p- come to play here. But I was going to let you let Jess go. See what oh, no, I was just agreeing with you. You know, I see in my company as well. Bottom line, uh, trumps everything at the end of the day. And, uh, you know, similarly to my company too, and probably Meta as well, is there's like, you know, a lot of, there's this whole great resignation thing going on where so many people are leaving their jobs and trying to trying to find something new after the pandemic, reassessing their careers and stuff like that. Xbox has probably been, you know, the, the, the hard end of that whole tale of stuff. But yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll do another here, survey in here, January. Here's even happens. another another example of this. Mm-hmm. I got another one, a more direct one, something recent, right? About the idea of data. Because Jez always says Microsoft is such a data-driven company that sometimes they look at it and they're like, it's not worth doing. Like the, Sometimes they don't have the... the what, what do you always say, Jez? They don't have like um, that human person touch. there. The human touch where they're like, oh, okay. Look at... And I, I, people mention this in chat, and there's only I'm bringing it up because I think it's relevant to what we're talking about. This idea of like we aren't doing these things or fixing these things because we feel it doesn't benefit the business, which is why anybody would do anything, right? Like you would do it because you think it would make you more money, realistically. Yeah. Um, the end of the year summaries, right? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Xbox cool. used to do them. In fact, they were the only ones who done them, right? And then they stopped. And then wouldn't you know it, PlayStation's been doing them, Nintendo did them, Steam's done them, Spotify does them, literally everybody does them except Xbox. And I guarantee you the reason why they stopped is because the data said the person or people who would make that website, it isn't worth them to do this because this doesn't give any value to the platform or drive people to Xbox or the platform. They'd be better served doing something else and... What does it even matter when we can have another company do it for us, like True Achievement does? Yeah, I think I guarantee it's, you that's their thought process. It is. It is, and this is exactly what I'm talking about. They they probably looked at the data and was like, "Well, uh, well, this end of year wrap up didn't make us any money." And it's like, well, it's it's not meant to. It's supposed to give you flavor. It's supposed to give you like. Uh, you know, the, the sort of warm, fuzzy feeling that you can't express in a spreadsheet. You can't express right. why the, your year wrapped is a, is a warm, fuzzy feeling. You know, it, literally every gaming company's done it. Nintendo, play, like Ran says, Nintendo. Nintendo, literally Nintendo. Steam, <laughs> Nintendo. Spotify. Done, like, come on, come on. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's... Well, the thing is, Nintendo's arguably the best at this. Because Nintendo are the company that almost use no data. They just throw everything in the kitchen sink and the, at the wall and see what sticks. And that's why like, sometimes they have really bad cycles where they make something like the Wii U. And they have a really good cycle where they make something like the Wii or the Nintendo Switch. It's because they're, they're not data-driven. <laughs> they're all about heart and soul. And that's why Nintendo is so beloved. Because they connect with consumers on a deeper level. Something Xbox scarcely understands, to be quite honest with you. And this is like another thing about like the the whole telemetry dominating microsoft way too hard and the fact that microsoft didn't do an end of year thing is is completely indicative of this they're they're obsessed with data and it's to their detriment um you know what happened to avatars they made avatars and now avatars are pretty much gone and and you know forgotten about because again i guarantee someone somewhere microsoft was like how is this making us money you know there has to be from (coughs) for microsoft there has to be 
a monetary element to everything they do. And the only reason Xbox is so high up at the company now as an entity is because Phil was able to tie it to cloud. And they was able to say, look, we, we got Xbox, we can make money, we can add a subscription service, we can also add it to Azure and do PlayFab and GameStack. And, and you bet those things are driving a huge amount of money for Microsoft because practically every AAA game pretty much uses Azure PlayFab now as their live ops service. So you can guarantee that's like that's like the anchor that keeps Xbox high up at the company politically is the fact that they can they can they can tap into the business the business coffers with that stuff. But all this stuff like avatars, achievements, end of year stats, they all die on this hill of Microsoft not being able to prove that there's a monetary benefit to it. But the problem is some of this stuff you just can't represent it in a spreadsheet. And I think this is, and this is a, something I'm going to write about as well, is that Xbox Ooh. lacks heart. It lacks heart, you know. It doesn't lack for passion, but it lacks for heart and soul, and it's because of this stuff, this kind of stuff. Um, I, don't know, I, don't I don't necessarily agree with you on that. I think people there have the heart. I think the people there have heart and soul. The people do. Spades. The people do, but operationally, Microsoft as an entity is lacking in soul and heart. They, they are, you know. Um, and I see this across, covering Microsoft as a, as a business across the whole, the whole you know, the whole cross-section of their products. It's, go, it's from Windows to Surface to Xbox. You can feel this kind of data-driven mindset, which precludes them from doing things that are fun, you know. Um, and uh, it's a whole other discussion, you know. And it's the it's it's in spite of that that Xbox is still able to function as it is because there are people at Xbox who are full of heart and soul and passion and they sort of drive through the cool stuff right they drive yeah. they drive they drive it through but there is this there is this layer of coldness that Xbox has to exist in spite of you know which is why we don't have upgrades to achievements and it's why we avatars are dead and undeveloped and. You know, it's why there's not more fun stuff, you know, and why it's all, it all revolves around the catalog, the subscription and what they can sell ultimately, which I think yeah, is well, probably hurting I, the company. Maybe at the end of the day, mm. Game Pass is the best Xbox exclusive. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's I mean more it's so than any game. So maybe they are right to pump as much money into as possible. Maybe they are right to make it a focus of the dashboard you know, and maybe like when I talk about that, it's like, listen, I don't need to be advertised to about what's going on at Xbox. We're all hardcore users. Me, Cog, Jez, anybody listening here, any of the Patreons, we know what's going down with Xbox. We don't need to be told or shown what's up. But like, if you're new, like all the people that got Series S's for the Christ- Christmas, like the kids crying over getting, you know, getting their, their console finally, maybe there is something to be said about like, a dashboard that displays these things to you. You know what I mean? Where it maybe bothers us, but then again, people always say, how long do you stand on the dashboard anyways? That is the thing. It was like, people are like, like, do you stare at the dashboard? Like, why do you need to look a certain way? Aren't you just playing a game? Cause there's, there's always a lot of back and forth with that. No, but. it's a good point. It's a good point. I, I think it, I'm in the middle because I, I do empathize with what Jesse said as far as, as far as the heart and, and the gaming side of it, right? And the part of me that still has, I don't say hope for them, is just that the fact that Phil is who he is, right? Yeah. If it was run by anyone else, which was kind of more of a colder business by the numbers kind of person, then I would be concerned. And, and it is general concern if one day, because, you know, Phil ain't going to be here forever. Phil ain't going to be around. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't right? know. This, here's the, okay. Prediction time for Cognito. Let's go. Let's go. Assuming this generation is the same length as last one, maybe give it a year over last one. So last gen was seven years, right? Yeah. So we had new consoles come in 2020. So seven years. So new consoles in 2027. Let's just say an extra year for the pandemic, right? Mm -hmm. So say we got brand new consoles coming in 2028, okay? Mm -hmm. Is Phil still head of Xbox in 2028? Good question. That's a good question. I mean, from what I know, you know, internally, from what I've heard, he is solely responsible for a lot of Xbox's game studios to actually get the deal across the finish line 
so that they were actually acquired. When a lot of a lot of CEOs, a lot of heads did their due diligence on Microsoft and whether or not they should be acquired and stuff, his name con- constantly comes up. And, you know, a lot of them, from what I hear, are tied to his being there. Now, to your point, he can't, he can't be there forever. Right? So at the end of the day, he's going to have to set up a successor or put them in a, in a situation where they're set up for success consistently. So to Jez's point, his greatest thing during his reign is Game Pass. He's, he, he made Xbox have a seat at the Microsoft table. He made gaming have a seat. And I think that's the thing that a lot of people lose sight of because I get, I have these conversations with Kyle a lot. He's like, I don't get it. You know, part of his frustration, like, I don't get why people, you know, da, da, you know, Phil Dominus, you know him, right? Deify him, as King says, is because we were here on this platform in 2013, <laughs> 2014, right? We were here when the concern was, do they even care about gaming? That's you know, true. we were here when, you have Rise, Son of Rome's, um, Sunset Overdrives, Quantum Breaks, and there's no sequels, right? Why is this the case? Why don't you have ownership? Why can't you control the IPs? And we learn some harsh lessons, right? And then Game Pass comes out, and it's like, wow, okay, this is a game changer. This is something we've never seen before. He's part of that reinventing themselves and making them relevant to show investment. And that's a big deal because people were very... Let's be honest, it was extremely bleak. That's why I said it was the worst, because people were like, that was the generation I had friends. I remember it like it was yesterday, Ran. The Xbox reveal, the disaster debacle that was, and people go, okay, all my friends on my friend list say, yo, uh, Cog, we're going to PlayStation. <laughs> we, we're not feeling DRM. We're not feeling this connect. It's $500. It's, it, it's not even the most powerful console. I am out. I am not a part of this Xbox. I don't know what's going on. It's TV, TV, TV. I'll catch you later. This is where I'm going to be, right? That was the generation they were supposed to lose. So when they lost that, and then I, I, I said each year it's been a rebuilding, and we saw the 2018, and we're like, okay, you saw the studio reveals. You're like, okay, Ninja Theory Playground, here we go, right? XO comes the following year, the same year, Obsidian. You start to see the investment, and you go, okay, they are serious. They're at the table. And to Jez's point, you know, Game Pass was the key. Game Pass got that up to Sacha and showed them, okay, this is not only a revenue stream, this is something that we can do, and now we have a seat at the table. So now we fast forward to where we are now. Series S, way Series X and S combo, combo, way better scenario than they were last generation. They are competitive. They are in the mix. They are doing way better than they were before. Game Pass is growing. We expect to see a big year, 2023, and that's hopefully should be the cadence moving forward. As we go to the end of the generation, Phil Spencer, what happens? I think he has to, A, set up a successor, whether that be Sarah Bond, whether that be whomever, right, to take over the reins. And B, I still think he'll probably be in some form of an advisory role, if I had to guess. You know, mm. he, he's so tied to everything. And I, I, listen, I don't get into the deifying. I've met Phil a few times. But my impressions has always been a straight shooter, a person who welcomes the tough conversations. I've been there when he's been in front of King and King was not happy with an E3 showcase, and he wanted to know, he dug, he wanted to know, okay, what, what, what was it that we did wrong? What, what, what could we have improved there? This is a person that generally takes the criticism head on and is willing to challenge. I mean, let's, even we talked about an IOP recently, you know, that could not have been easy showing up at the Game Awards after the FTC blocked you. True. Just, just take the human element for a second. You, you've been blocked by the FTC. You don't have, you didn't have a lot of first per- party games to show, but yet you show up. And for all accounts from people that I know were there, he talked to everyone mm. at that show. That says a lot about the character. I mean, that's, that's Phil. Like, I, I always yeah. say, I, I'm biased when it comes to Phil. Me I'm too. sure he does his bias when it comes to Phil. Phil's done a lot for me. Like, yeah. you know, he invited me to E3. Like, he didn't have to befriend me 
talk to me about stuff, take time out of his day to explain things to me, invite me to E3 and let me break a million gamer score with them. Like Listen, he didn't have to do any of that stuff. Like at the end of the day, I, I, I've been around all these guys. I've been, I, I know who's fraud and who ain't. And here's the thing to me, the ultimate indictment on Phil, he is a pure gamer. Like a pure game, like the man lives. He's playing these games, you know. Like it, it's it's real, you know. Say so, like it, it's nothing, you know, manufactured about that. This is a person who cares about. It. So to me, I'm always gonna have a bias towards a natural gamer running a game company. Like that's what I will because there's going to be sensibilities that only he understands. That a person that's a non-gamer who's just a business or a suit is never gonna get. Right. So that to me is just I think he will probably if he does step down or retires or whatever, which he's allowed to, he might still be in an, in an advisory role. He's done that much. I think his turnaround. Last point I'll say about Phil. And, and King knows I'm a Sega kid. Peter Moore is my man. Like That's my guy. You know what I'm saying? Dreamcast. You know, he used to come out brash, the fun, the tattoos or the uh, like. Peter Moore understood the theatrics of gaming, but he was aggressive. And he, was, he, took, he took losing, you know, to, say, to Dreamcast and to Sega to the Sony very personally. So when he started at 360, he had a chip on his shoulder, which I actually loved about him. You know, but I have to admit, if you look at the body of work, yes, Peter has the games. And Phil has to deliver that final portion. I will not let Phil off the hook on the games, on the first party games. And hopefully that comes, right, with this year and, and moving forward. But if you look at, objectively his reign is probably the greatest turnaround in the history of gaming this company was dead in the water as a brand we can't forget that this they were the butt of every joke a laugh it's, it was almost embarrassing to say i have xbox and i like the platform during the xbox one generation <laughs> let's be honest right so like he is already not only turned it around made it profitable right and now they are in the mix. So all he's got to do now is just land the plane. These games got to be good because we're going to get on them. <laughs> we're going to get on them if these games ain't good. You made us wait and these games ain't good. We're going to get on you. But if these games are good, bro, he can ride off to the sunset and he will be probably the, he will surpass Peter at mm. that point. You can make the argument now because of the investment in the games, he's, he's already surpassed them. I, I think he's, he's fantastic for gaming and he's fantastic for the brand. And I just hope, I hope they can land the plane with, with the games being good. Cause if they do, yeah, he, he'll solidify himself. Then we can give him another Dominus Maximus. So really, you can do all the King stuff after that. Yeah. So you gotta have, uh, you gotta have Caesar in there at some point, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah you gotta, yeah. you gotta, you gotta have Caesar. I leave the King. King saw the vision before me because even me, I'm objective. And I told King, I was like, mm, there's three moments I want to see how he maneuver. It was the Xbox One, right? How awful that launch was, how they turned it around, Game Pass debuts, and then we saw the, the commitment to Xbox First Party Studios, right? I said, okay, that's, that's a good sign of a turnaround. My second frustration with them, extremely frustrated, Series X launch. How you don't have no first party games? How do you respond to that? Right? Halo's not re Infinite's not ready. Yada yada yada. We saw the Game Pass deals. We saw EA come into the service, and then boom, here comes Zenimax acquisition. Whoa! You mean Bethesda games? But you know they become the de facto RPG box. Like this is quality, right? And then you continue on. You say, okay, cool. Then 2021 happens. Okay, okay, boom. You see the cadence. Obviously, we know about 2022, but the story's not finished. The, 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 the saga must continue. We got to see how they, they finish it. But already, in this short period of time, they've been competitive. It's a different energy. And the last thing I want to say is I keep forgetting, and I always don't, I, I don't give them enough credit, and I know we rag on them. But look, I'm a person who loves JRPGs and Japanese games to my mm -hmm. core. I grew yeah. up on that. And let's be real. And this is Peter Moore probably say his Achilles heel because he had lost Odyssey. He has some great strides in that. But let's be honest, X J Xbox in Japan was, was, a, was a joke in the sense of, yeah, they, they care about it, but they don't really care about it. To see the commitment by this reign, this regime, when you see Sarah Bond go over there, you see Phil go over there. I'm talking about boots on the ground, 
right? And you see the persona deal. And I mean, Soft would have this argument. He's like, Cog, it's not happening. You know, Atlas beats to their own drum. And I'm like, yeah, but the Sega deal. It's like, no, people, the people laughed at me. They were like, the Sega deal is only about cloud. It's not about games. There's no headway there. And we see the persona thing happens in Game Pass. You see Yakuza like a dragon in game. The franchises that notoriously would skip the Xbox platform are now in Game Pass. And you're starting to see that commitment. Even my boy, Matty Plays, is like, yo, okay, Cog, I see it. Now, is it perfect? Are there still some gaps? <clears throat> Square, Enix. Um, <laughs> this, 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 yes, they're, they're gaps. But you see the commitment. We see the Kojima thing, right? They are making strides. Surely we see the series as actually selling in Japan. What? What's going on? So again, those are the things I for a person that says, why are you still in the in the ecosystem? Why do you love it? If I didn't see progress and improvement, then I'm out. But I see it. So it's almost like the the sports team analogy, uh, Rand, that we talk about, which is when I see the investment and I see the future draft picks on the way and I'm excited. There's a future that could really be really nice if it all pans out for them. And that's why people stay in it. That's why people go, okay, we'll, we'll allow that to happen for this one year, even though you still got to execute. But we can see what you're trying to do. And I want to give them credit there because that is an area that I never thought they would actually. And it seems like Game Pass is the Trojan horse. That's the thing. Because you see, what is it? Um, then Team Ninja say, hey. You know, we throw a whole long in there because because of Game Pass. You know, that engagement, that's something that excites. And this is Game Pass at, what, 25, 30? We don't even know what it was. 30 million? What is it now? You know, imagine if it gets to that mythical number, right? Then it becomes undeniable to a third party to not, you know, want to include it in that service for that engagement. So you see the you see the hope. You see the potential. And, and I think that's why I want to give them credit that they could still pull this thing off. Yeah. That's pretty good. Jazz, you there? I am, buddy. I was just letting uh, Cognito yeah. wax lyrical. So, uh, <laughs> so just before we get out of here, um, you know, you let people know where you know where they can where they can reach you at. But I want to get a number from you. Yes. For next year, 2023, on a scale of one to ten, ten being the best Xbox year ever, and mm-hmm. one being 2013, I guess. Mm-hmm. What do you think 2023 is going to be? No less than an eight. No less than an eight. So pretty damn good year. Yes. But not the best year ever. Depending mm-hmm. on the, the, how great the games are. If Starfield, I mean, it could, it could literally be a nine. <laughs> well, you know you know, what that's yeah. what I'm asking you. You know, we, we, right. And it's good to ask now because one, we don't know if the show, when the showcase is or if it's real, even though it sounds like it is. Uh, we don't know what they're going to show at E3. We don't know any release dates for any of their games or if any of them are being delayed or if they're coming out. So it's just good to be like, all right, give me how you feeling about next year because we were all feeling pretty positive about this year yeah. until we got to May and they pulled the rug out from underneath us. So that's, that's what I'm wondering. Are, are you, you, so you're still very much like 8 out of 10. I'm pretty positive. Could go up to 9 out of 10 depending on how good Starfield is and stuff, huh? Absolutely, especially if Redfall sets the tone, you know, and then Starfield does what we think it could potentially do, and it's a classic Bethesda-like experience. Man, it could be a very special year for them. They will be, they they will make the console extremely attractive. They make this, and let's be honest, they 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 lost out on 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 Game Pass growth because those two titles didn't yeah, make. They sure it, did. right? So yeah. you know. They, that's expected, you know, revenue. That's expected increase in subscribers. And I think they, they know what they got to do. It's just, again, the games have to be good. And if they're good, no less than an eight, potential nine. But we got, they got to execute. So, uh, mm. yeah, let, every, let everybody know where they can find you at, my, my brother. Before we do that, let me just say I absolutely love this. You two are my favorite. <laughs> it's fun to uh to, to get in here with, with Jez Corden of Windows Central, the great Jez Corden. The managing editor of Windows Central. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe, yeah. maybe podcast with this other guy. 
This other guy from Chicago, the South Side, the Holy Rand out though. I love these discussions. This is fun. You know, um, I remember obviously before even I started podcasting, you guys I would all you know, I would listen and, and, and see what you guys are doing and again, congratulations to all the success you both of you have. Love you guys, you're good people. And what I also want to give you guys credit is the balance takes and you know, people don't give you guys enough credit. When you guys do go you know, hard on Xbox when they don't do what they're supposed to do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I, I love that because I think we have to look at things through, an, through an objective lens. And I think you guys do a fantastic job at that. Keep up the phenomenal work. Love the page. Love uh, Jazz Ads Reads, by the way. I was hoping I'd get a mm. ad read, but <laughs> we didn't get that today. And uh, I love the banter, you guys. It's two genuine friends arguing about if something's a cookie or a biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> It's a cookie. What the hell it. is a biscuit? I don't even yeah. know. I've been my. I listen to you guys usually on my route to the gym. I'm laughing. I'm so. I'm just having a great time. So it's an honor to be in the realm of Xbox Two Plus One. Continued success for me. I'm at Lord Cognito on Twitter. Um, Iron Law Podcast every Sunday is the Lord's Day. Check us out. We will come back after the New Year because Cog wants another week off. <laughs> no podcasting. You guys are the only ones I broke the rule for. Check me out there. You know, Lord King, Lord Attic, Lord Solve, my brothers. We will be back. Check out lordsofgaming.net. We got some fantastic write-ups right now. We're doing our Golden Lance Awards. We're doing like kind of kind of like our recaps of the best developer, the best this of the year, the best game, all these different kind of categories. I love these guys. They they kind of like we like the, the we we're like the, uh, the 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 AAA feeder system to window set. <laughs> <laughs> you know, before before you go to the big leagues, if you want to sharpen your craft, you want to get in the industry, come check us out at lordsofgaming.net. We got some great guys. I love my editorial team. Salute to um, Nick. Salute to Mahmoud, Josh Redding, the whole squad. Salute them out. And, of course, if you want me for Xbox-specific, Ren, Xbox-specific kind of ILP because there's all the topics on the ILP. <laughs> but Xbox-specific, you can catch me also on Defining Dude with the wonderful, amazing Mr. Matty Plays on last day mm -hmm. meeting. And last but not least, if you love Destiny, and Destiny is actually really fun right now, Season of the Seraph is out, go check me out on The Last Word, my brother Ebontis and Ty Guy Travis. And gentlemen, this was an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much. We do have a question that comes in. Slickback yeah. says, Cog, when are you and Maddie going to record a Plague's Tale Requiem mm -hmm. spoiler cast? That is on the docket. It's my fault because I got addicted to Midnight Suns. <laughs> 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 and, and basically December just threw me off brother like I was supposed to do it Midnight Suns came out then Dino had a new dungeon and I'm playing that and then I got Crisis Core that I kind of want to play so it's going to be a little while it's going to be a little while I'm going to do it but it's going to be a little while and then um, last part I think you guys got um, Evil Dead on I still have to play that there's still like four games I need yeah. to play and finish but we probably will do it because Plague Tale is amazing and i need to finish this and if you do the spoiler cast i'll I nominate you. myself I got you. Uh, we also have a question from aleron yes. uh gorgo i'm sorry if i said your name wrong again he says cog do you think xbox and for that matter pc are safe in the destiny universe since the playstation acquisition or do you see playstation being the quote best place to play um. I think they Bungie is very savvy. They're lawyers. They've been through so many breakups and divorces, so to speak, that when we, when we looked at the contract, even Hogan and I said, this is unprecedented what Sony has allowed Bungie to do under that signing. So I don't anticipate Destiny going anywhere. It's going to remain status quo. I don't anticipate any of the... The, the 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 shenanigans of exclusive maps and stuff all that stuff that used to happen back in the day when they were under the activision umbrella and they had um sony had like kind of exclusive rights to things i don't anticipate that and then i'm of the firm believer now and i think me and you jazz have had this discussion which is i don't think it makes sense for live service to be exclusive anymore no i don't think it does either like increasingly i, I know people wouldn't be happy about me saying this but increasingly i think like sea of thieves would be huge on playstation yeah. I think Microsoft would wait and make way more money with Sea of Thieves if they put it on PlayStation as well. Um, I and I, I think they should do it, personally. I know a lot of people wouldn't be happy about me saying that. but Dude, they got pitchforks in the chat right yeah. now. <laughs> I know, yeah. <laughs> Pitchfork, because, like, you could even make the argument, like, why not put place why not put halo on playstation yeah right i mean why not put fours on playstation I mean, why not put any of the games that have a games as a service 
I mean, man, Xbox yeah, did say they put, they put it wherever uh, Game Pass exists. So someone would have to accept Game Pass. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, yeah. I think, you know, they. Uh, I, I think if if exclusive. I don't know. I think they would put certain games on PlayStation, but I think they also know, and I think Phil's even talked about this, like exclusives are kind of expected and you need them. So like, that's, you know, that's why Halo's Xbox only or, you know, not on PlayStation and stuff like that. Right. So, um, it'd be interesting to see how they do handle Bungie and not so much destiny Two, but, IPs. the yeah. next game the new yeah. ip ak code matter <laughs> yeah is is that is that multi-platform is that xbox playstation pc or is sony you know kind of like hey what in the bungee you Nothing know will change. That, that's the, yeah. the argument me and our addict have because he he's concerned but I, I i don't see any scenario where bungee allows themselves to be locked in and they were very explicit on how they want to control their own quote unquote destiny. <laughs> so I do think I do think the 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 matter IP will be multiplayer. I think they will continue to operate. I the, I think the concern is the com- the concern on on Bungie's part is the conversation I had with Travis, which is he is concerned that Sony will brain drain them for their live service acumen, and thus maybe the quality of certain things goes down because. You know, they're talking, I think Sony's talking like 10 live service games. Yeah, a lot know, of live service long-term. games. Yeah. And, and, and that's not their forte, whereas, you know, Bungie is. So I guess the concern is long term, does that fracture the relationship if they're being so tied to the help, to assist on the development of these, you know, live service IPs? That's something we have to monitor. But as far as the exclusivity, thing, I think I think, I think Sony is, is going to hold their end of the bargain. I don't anticipate anything you know changing because if, if they do bungie will find a way to get out <laughs> Trust me yeah, they already bungie. got out they got out from underneath microsoft so absolutely you know um but jazz is that is that is that everything yeah man i think we're we're a wrap thank you so much cognio for joining us and especially on your week off in this yes. in this festive holiday season um you know, and uh, also thanks to Rand, I suppose. For, <laughs> suppose for, as for taking time out of your busy schedule. Oh, God, believe me, I'm not busy. <laughs> well, Cognito, uh, Cognito's living the Rand life right now. Yes, you know? great. Oh, so great. Well, um, yeah, and thanks to everyone who joined us in chat. And if you're listening to this later, either on Patreon um, or later on next week. Well, it won't be next week, I suppose, for you guys. Um, but this is going to go live out to the public a little bit later. But, um, yeah, thanks to everyone who joined us. Uh, have yep. Happy holidays. Thanks again, Cognito. And uh, we'll see you next month for the next Xbox 2 plus 1. Yeah, and, uh, we'll let us be know back on... this Friday, though. Yes. Yeah. And we'll be, well... Well, I suppose it is. It's this Friday for the people watching now, and yes. I suppose it's this Friday for the people watching next week as well. This is gonna. Yeah. This is gonna get confusing, man. But, I know. Well, <laughs> it, it is what it is. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah. So thanks everybody, and uh, I'll see you yeah. w- whenever I see thanks, you. Chet. Thanks, Mr. <laughs> Cognito. Bye. Peace.